All right, everybody, welcome to the Tuesday show, now in glorious 1080p on your streaming platforms right now. I am James Chen, and I am joined by my co-hosts, Mr. Ultra David and Mr. Tubaware. Uh, people are saying there's no video? What are you talking about? I can definitely see that there's video on the stream right now. I'm currently watching it as well. Okay. Uh, hey, you know what I just saw? All my pores. Oh, I'm in You're such high definition video. Yes. I don't. I'm. Not, I'm definitely not in 1080p, for sure. My camera is 720p strong, so <laughs> I get to. I get to not shave for an extra day. I just don't shave anyway, so it's fine. I shaved. Well, I guess I shaved yesterday. So you whatever. literally don't have a beard right now, and it takes you three days. So you shaved within the last couple days. You're right, I shaved on Sunday. Uh, I've turned you up as loud as I can, uh, Tubo. Go for it. Like, move your microphone closer. Yeah, there you go. There I need to go. eat my mic? Yeah, right. there you go. All right. All right. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us tonight, a.k.a. whatever other time. If you're watching on YouTube, we're talking about these topics on the left. Yes, I got it this time. Um, Total Combat 11 Ultimate, a.k.a. UMK 11. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive update. There's a lot of news that came out about it over the past weekend, of course, as well as some matches, which is pretty cool. We're going to have an interview with Phage. We'll be talking about accessibility in games and the FGC. Very interesting conversation. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to have five, five topics on, you know, should you upload other people's matches if they don't know about it? Is that something that's cool to do or not? <laughs> uh, we're going to have viewer matches, uh, viewer questions, as we always do. A couple of those. We have a little bit of other game news. We do have some tournament results to briefly go over. There's some upcoming stuff, and then we're going to just ramble on at the end, as we typically do. But let's start with Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, but again, before that, just wanted to uh, give a quick shout-out and thank you to all of the people in the past month that have donated and helped uh, cover the new computer, because that's what we have now running here, and... I hope it's glorious and wonderful and looks great for you guys and everything like that. Appreciate that very much for everybody helping out okay. in that area. But I, I need to know something that's very important. Did the closed captioning pick up Dingleberry Platypus? It did. It did? It actually did. Oh, it's so good. I love this. I, I'm putting this on my stream. I have to now. That's, it's too good. It got a Barry Walzania and Dingleberry Platypus. <laughs> Yeah, I That's can't believe why. it worked, but it did. Now, uh, just so people know, uh, this is going to be something that we're going to have on for every Tuesday show, which is a closed caption. Uh, if you want to turn it off, you can. You can mouse over the screen, and there will be a, a settings bar right over on top of Tubo. And uh, you can basically click on the settings and turn it off. So if it's something that you would rather not have on. So this is an extension that can be plugged into... Um, into Twitch so that the users have the options uh, to turn it on and off and stuff. And people are saying you're still really quiet, Brandon. Uh, I mean, I've not changed anything on my end. I have you set to I have you set to outputting at 200% right now. So yeah, I mean, I, I've changed nothing here. Let me try. Let me try that. Let me see if I'm louder now. Otherwise, I'm out of ideas. Talk loud. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm projecting. Yeah, there you go. Unfortunately, Brandon is a quiet fella and doesn't know how to speak loudly, but yeah. we can learn for yeah. this episode. Yeah, that's me, all right. That's Tubaware. All right, well, again, thanks to everybody for supporting James and getting the new computer, and shout out to James for getting all this set up in just the last few days. The, the yeah, computer came you. over the weekend, or just before the weekend, and he figured it all out. So yeah. Nice work. I mean, a lot of all it right. was because I had gotten a new hard drive, but on my old computer and I made sure that I set up that hard drive contained everything Ultra Chen. I don't know if people know this, but you could move your desktop to another folder. You can move your downloads to another folder. You can do all that stuff. So I moved everything Ultra Chen onto one hard drive. So as soon as I got this new computer, I just took that hard drive, put it over there and everything loaded up just fine. <laughs> it was <Great>. wonderful. Nice work. <laughs> All right, well, that wasn't the only big thing that happened over the past week. There were also a couple of big video game announcements. Let's get to the first one over here on the side as we start the topic timer for Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Combat Pack 2 was announced. 
Any chance you could put that up on the video feed? Oh, you want me to just, uh... Hey guys, watch this. James can actually do it now. It's incredible. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Well, I mean, if if you can't, that's on you, James. That's not, <laughs> we can't blame the computer anymore, man. Am I allowed to play this video here? It's telling me that. Why do I have to <laughs> sign in? You have to sign in. Oh my god. All right. Well, please don't do that on the show. Are I'll you serious? Why can't I be? All right. I'm going to have to do a screen capture then. I can do it through a screen capture. You know, it's not that important. It's okay. okay. I don't want to stress about it. Uh, if anybody <laughs> has seen it, uh, it is a quick little trailer in which the Tarkatan that we talked about last time, Baraka's, like, dude, uh, gets chased, and Rain shows up and kills him, so Rain is in the game, and then Melina, I guess actually Rain, like, stops him or whatever, and then Melina kills him. She comes in, she's in the game. And then there was a trap, and it almost catches Melina, and then it turns out the person who set the trap is John Rambo. So the new characters in MK11 Ultimate, which I will from now on be calling UMK Ult uh, UMK11, are Rain, Melina, and Rambo. The scene has been asking for Melina ever since MK11 was announced. Yeah. And maybe even asking is the wrong word. Some members of the MK scene have been vociferously, unceasingly demanding Melina. And finally, she's in the game, which is cool. Uh, five people in the world wanted Rain, and congratulations to them. Rain is kind of cool, though. I mean, he looks a little bit more fleshed out, I feel. And then Rambo, there were rumors that Rambo was going to be in. And he, and he fits the bill of 1980s action flick stars that probably had a big influence on Ed Boon when he was like growing up in the you know, 70s and 80s. Uh, and I really feel like that's exactly the criteria that they use to decide who gets into uh, the game as the guest character. So, those three. What do you think about those three? Uh, so, I just want to say, I told you so about Melina. Okay, yep, yep. Um, what about I Ash, was very huh? wrong about Ash. I was way wrong about Ash. Dude, you had a whole theory on why it was Ash. And, you know why I had that theory? Because he makes way more sense than Rambo. I don't understand why Rambo's in the game. I really hate the decision. Uh, if I was an M if I was an NRS player, I would be irate that Rambo got put in this game. I don't think he fits whatsoever. Wow. Okay. Okay. Why irate? Uh, there's way too many gun characters. It's supposed to be a martial arts game. When did all of a sudden Mortal Kombat become bang bang shoot 'em up, Call of Duty? I have uh, I have so... news for you about Ash from Evil Dead. Listen, yeah, he has one shotgun. He's not sitting there with two guns in his arms looking like a MAGA wet dream, you know? Like, it's a whole different thing, man. I mean, I, I uh, guess. I, I don't know. There's only, what are there? Terminator and Robocop. Robocop. Yeah. Terminator, Terminator Robocop. Remember I paired them last week. I said it makes sense. Terminator versus Robocop was very much a thing in the 90s. So they're going to bring in a Commando then next, right? Yeah, like, gonna... I don't, that's, uh, who goes with Rambo? He doesn't have an enemy besides the U.S. government. You know, like, what is his, who is his enemy? I don't understand. Uh, yeah. It doesn't fit to me. It's a, I don't it's know. a fair, fair question. Yeah, I mean, like with Robocop, where I had concerns that they would take a character that is, like, very, uh, that, that makes a very interesting set of points in the movie that he is originally in, and just makes him into, like, of just violent dude for, yeah. for who has like no backstory and no reason and in some ways they didn't do that in some ways they made it clear that there's like more to the character and in other ways you know he just does the same thing that everybody else does he just shoots you and he's vir very violent and he, his vitality is like the same way that he died which is like weird it's just a weird <laughs> choice so I mean I'm, I'm a little concerned that they will end up doing the same thing with Rambo, where, uh, you know, Rambo in the first movie is quite a different character in some ways from Rambo in yeah, later yeah. movies. And, and same thing with Robocop, right? Like, Robocop now, in the first movie. Now, you're talking like about... Robocop you're talking like first movie as in first blood, right? Not Rambo. You're talking first blood, or are you talking Rambo? First blood. Okay, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> Making yeah. sure. <laughs> nobody, yeah. nobody calls the first Rambo first blood. They always say the first Rambo. 
right? Anyway. That's what I've that's what I've always said. It's, it makes sense to me. Anyway. I mean, whatever. So so the, these these two characters have pretty different like variations of themselves, where they have motivations and they're interesting, and the movies are interesting. And, and I'm not sure that that really came across super well with Robocop, even though I play him and I really like him as a character. I'm a little worried about that for Rambo as well. Sure, sure. I'm still just sad that Melina wasn't killed in the trailer and was a troll. That's all. I'm just, I just that would have been that would have been a sick call. Uh, I mean, you 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 said that last week. Right? Yeah, uh huh. I said that that's what they should absolutely do. That would have, that would have been so. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you. That would have been super dope. And I'm really sad that that's not what they did because I think that would have been hilarious. I did like someone in the chat suggesting that Jean Claude Van Damme as Guile should be added to the game, and I think that would actually be kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> Specifically, Jean Claude Van Damme as Guile. Yeah, Guile. They have yeah. to take the the sprites from Street Fighter, the movie, the game, yeah. and put them directly in MK11. Because see, then 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 Guile would be, and we would have the crossover that we've always wanted, right? So Street Fighter cross uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh, but well, in a way, Jean Claude Van Damme's already in the game, as you know. Yeah. Good old Johnny Cage. Good old Johnny Cage. Oh, that's true. So okay. as far as Melina goes, I agree with you guys that it would have been hilarious if she hadn't come back or if she had been, if she had like shown up and then like Devora ate her face again. <laughs> it would have been very funny. At the same time, seeing how people who really wanted Melina back have reacted has actually like made it a little bit more endearing to me. I hated seeing all the reply guys and reply gals who were constantly asking for Melina on Ed Boon tweets. Like, I yeah, just, I don't know how they put up with that. It was real bad. Uh, it was. But now, like, when I saw, like, Losty Girl is a big Mortal Kombat YouTuber. Uh, she's has, like, a few hundred thousand subscribers. Um, she's a really, really big Melina fan. And, you know, I watched her, like, re like, react to the reveal, and she's crying, and it was, like, very cute. And but Yeah, that made me, like, hate the idea of the character being back less. Just, I am glad for a pretty significant part of the MK player base that their favorite character is back. Like, it's not a character I care about, but I guess that's cool that they are feeling happy mm -hmm. about it. And I like that Melina, she looks weird. She, like, her face is really weird looking. And yeah. I like that. I think that's super cool. Like, she's supposed to be a mix of human and Tarkatan. And in the past, sometimes they've just, they've had her face like an MKX. Her face is just like a human face that has like little side jowls of like some weird fangs. But this one is just her whole face is like just real weird. Super gross looking. And I think that's at least interesting that they've gone the route of like, what's the weirdest thing we can do with this character? Like <laughs> let's make her look gross. And I think that's, it's very Mortal Kombat to me. So I, I like that at least. No, I mean, obviously, it's good to have people get their characters back, which reminds me, actually, there might be a topic that I want to add just on the, like, as a calling an audible to, to the 5 5 matchup. Just remind oh. me about that. That's kind of very related to this topic. I mean, just, just put it in the run of show. Oh, I don't know if you're, okay. if you're thinking about it. Sure. Uh, so, Melina, like, maybe it could be more interesting. I guess we'll see. We don't know anything about her play style. I... Katana already has some of the stuff. Katana already throws sides and already has the teleport, yeah. so. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but... I'm assuming that she'll have all her classic stuff, the role and everything. You know? I don't know, though, because some characters don't have their classic stuff, at least not in all their variations. Man, like, how wild would doesn't be... have Slide in all of his variations. Johnny Cage doesn't have the arcing Force Ball in all his variations. Baraka doesn't have Chop Chop in all his variations. Like, there might be some changes there. All right. Well, imagine they put out Melina, right? All this complaining, they put out Melina. <laughs> Alfred and Melina. And they put out this ver a version of her that no one likes. Everybody hates it. That, that would be... That would be the ultimate, like, Ed Boo troll, I think. Rather it's than definitely Ed possible, because when Katana launched, there were a lot of Katana fans out there who are accustomed to a playstyle that existed for her in MK9 and in MKX, and at launch, MK11, you just couldn't do it. It just wasn't you know, an option. Like, they changed yeah, right. her enough that, that you couldn't do that. And there were people who were in their feelings about it, for sure. Yeah. I mean, dude, I, I would. I mean, I have been. I've experienced that with a character very dear to my heart when they, they injected him into Street Fighter V. But that's it's very interesting story. because like i feel like as like in in a weird way be, even though street fighter's been around the longest and everything like that and you know it, it has iconic characters you street fighter has really trained people not to worry about that 
You know, because like when we got the third strike, Ryu and Ken couldn't cancel their sweep. You know, Chun Li was just like a completely different character <laughs> in in Third Strike. Uh, she wasn't basically the same character at all. And you know, it's just that's why like when Five came out and Dalsum was different. Like he didn't have a straight fireball anymore. You know, and I was like, this is so cool. You know, <laughs> like I don't, I'm mad that Cammy plays the same as Street Fighter Four Cammy. I wish they had changed her so much because honestly. Super Turbo Cammy has never existed again. Like that, I've had to get used to that, and so I actually don't mind it when they really tweak characters. And I, I find it fresh and exciting. But I know a lot of people don't necessarily feel that way. Well, I agree with you. I like seeing new stuff, and characters that I played in MKX, I played Kano and Kotal. They played really differently in MK11, and they're not bad, and they're not even uninteresting, but they're different. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I'll try out Baraka or, like, whoever. Like, I went on a little jaunt, you know? That's totally cool with me. But I also know that some people aren't on board with that. So, you know, whatever. It's fine. We'll see how they play. Rain, like I said, I knew maybe two Rain players in the world in uh, MK9. <laughs> and uh, he was, in my opinion, just, like, a real forgettable dude. Like, is he, he, the, is, just, he was just purple ninja. Is he like, the he guy? Has, but he's the guy who can kick you around the world, right? He has, he has round the world kick. Yeah, yep. he has round the world and kick, which is like the coolest has, thing uh, about Rain. <laughs> absolutely, it's been the coolest thing about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he has like, he can put you in a water bubble, and then he yeah. gets a juggle out of that. Like he has lightning strikes, it's, which is just basically the same thing as Katana know. catching you with the fan, you know, and stuff like that. Oh, Plus, it's just capture state. Round yeah. the world kick is important. So, <laughs> as long as he maintains around the world kick, I think we're fine. So, I actually don't know if he will because ancient, you can't use in competitive. Yeah, that actually it might be like that. Shao was Shao. Uh, Shang, Shang Tsung, Tsung already yeah. has a variation that has the ninjas in it, and he has rains round the world kick right. in that variation so who knows who knows we'll see but at least the like looks of rain it's not just purple ninja anymore like there's a little bit more to it which i'm happy about at least dude this is this like this whole conversation where you're sitting feel here super enthused talk oh okay 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 <laughs> feel all right about it i guess yeah i mean it's it's like it's like how i'm now a baraka main even though i thought baraka was like the bummest most throwaway character in fighting games for like 30 years uh, but in MK11, I like what they did with him. So I'm open to that possibility for Melina and for Rain. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Wait, why do you think Baraka was that bad, though? Like, he's not that generic. <laughs> Maybe not generic. Just, I mean, certainly not as generic as, like, the fifth ninja. Like, the purple yeah, or see, black ninja. I can't wait. See, all I'm anticipating right white now ninja, is gray ninja. David talking about how he's willing to give Rain a chance and he likes the way Melina looks and everything. And then he's just going to spend all this time talking smack about Giovanna. And I'm going to be upset about that. Yes. You're tuned for about 15 minutes and that's going to be the discussion. Because <laughs> that's not going to make any sense to me at all whatsoever. But That's going to be a discussion very soon. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll see what's up with these characters. We don't know too much yet. We do know. I couldn't believe this, that Sylvester Stallone is actually the voice of Rambo. That's cool. That is true, yeah. That's so cool. Good job. Good job to that. So Rambo says one line, or maybe two lines, in the trailer. And when I heard it, I thought to myself, it's too bad that they didn't get as good of a voice actor as the one that they got for Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like, this, whoever did this line doesn't know how to make it sound like Rambo at all. And then it turns out to actually be it's literally Rambo. Well, you know, you know that it's a true story that Charlie Chaplin got third place in a Charlie Chaplin uh, imitation contest, right? Really? Yeah, it's a true story. He actually entered a Charlie Chaplin lookalike, you know, contest, and he got oh, third man. place. That's mm -hmm. great. I, I, but I mean, think about it back then. It's like people had a device in their pocket that if they googled Charlie Chaplin, pictures of him would come up. Maybe Fair people enough. didn't really know what Charlie looked like that much. He back was a famous to... movie star. Everyone saw him in the movie. Sure, sure, but you think their 28 grain film or whatever it was is in high def? Like, that's something kind of blurry, man. God You're damn, right. dude. Jesus. That is a very funny story, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as more info about Ultimate, uh, it's going to come with a Time Warrior skin pack for a few of the characters. It's also going to include all the previous skin packs. It will have crossplay between PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series XS. That's cool. Which is great. 
they've been testing that feature, something you've had to turn on for a while now. How, how much does Xbox it cost? How much does it PS4. cost? Do we know? So to upgrade, if you already have the base MK11, it's 15 bucks. And the full thing, if you don't have the game at all, is 60 bucks. Oh, and okay, in addition okay. to that, if you already have the game on PlayStation 4 or on Xbox One, you can actually upgrade on the new console. Oh, actually, like, that's cool. Move to PS5 okay. or to Xbox how do One. They, how do they do that if you're on the disc version of the game, though? I have no knowledge on how this works, but that's what's in the press release. <laughs> damn it, David, you're supposed to know all of it. What, what good are you? This is... I don't know anybody who works at NRS who I could ask. Mm, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but that's actually really, knew, that's actually really like cool. Because like one of the things that I've been talking about for so long is just how expensive fighting games are to get to the, you know, if you want to catch up to the game, you know, and and so yeah. the fact that they're doing this, like trying to figure out ways to make it so that if you own the game already now, you can get like I haven't bought the most recent season pass and stuff, but if I get a PlayStation 5 and it cost me only $15 to upgrade it on the P on the PlayStation 5. That would actually be really really nice. Or on the Xbox yeah. Series X depending on which one turns out stronger. I'm not going to make sure. that uh, I'm not going to make that assumption right now. But I think that's really I'm, cool. I'm definitely on board. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I really like that. Yeah, it just uh, in the chat Shay um yes, you can get so basically Ultimate is Aftermath plus Combat Pack 2. Yeah, that's cool. So if you don't if you don't have any of that stuff yet, uh, there you can. This only that. counts as Combat Pack Two with with. Uh... Yeah, it's Combat Pack Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combat yeah. Pack One was super drawn out. There were like a couple months between characters each time. Okay, so is is Rambo, Molina, and Rain the first characters of Combat Pack Two, or does that include RoboCop? They haven't, I... they haven't said. Oh, oh okay. no, RoboCop. Was... RoboCop was one. The previous one. Yeah, yeah. Dang. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he was combat pack one. Okay, yeah, man. Okay. And they haven't said anything beyond the three. I'm. I would assume there probably is, but they haven't announced anything. Right. Officially. Yeah, like we've mentioned many times, I really hope that this game gets supported for the next few years. So I'd be really happy to find out that well, there is more stuff. I mean, the way that they're doing this, porting it over to the new platform, doing all this yeah. stuff, like this doesn't feel like something that they're planning to replace with Injustice Three at 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 a moment at the drop of a hat. This feels like something that they're trying to support as best as they can. So well, right, right. I feel oh, like no, you, you know what, you guys, you guys in the chat are right. Shiva, Fujin, and Robocop were not Combat Pack 1, they were actually Aftermath. That is, oh, you are, you are correct. You are correct. okay, okay. So there's a Combat Pack 1, an Aftermath, and now right, Combat right, Pack right. 2, which we can only assume has the three characters, but maybe have more characters later? Who knows, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, and then, I, I just, I wanted to shout out the way that they announced this stuff um, because along with just putting out the normal things like here's a trailer, here's a bunch of info that you guys can regurgitate, they also did things like have the Melina voice actor record customized uh, uh, voice uh, sound bites for some people who are really well known to be huge Melina fans. So like I mentioned Losty Girl as being a big Melina fan and a big content creator and the voice actress for Melina actually recorded a thing that mentions Losty Girl by name. It's like it like talks to to Losty Girl. Is that I think in is the game? Cool. I don't know if it's going to be in the game, but it's definitely part of like the press that they've been the doing. The announcement. They put okay, it out gotcha. Sure. A lot of that stuff out. Yeah, there were a few other people too that they did this for. That's cool. Which I think is really great. Yeah, I think that's like a great way to just interface directly with the community, and and it's nicely done. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. All right. Well. Not sure what else to say about uh, UMK11 for now. I'm super stoked about it. Oh, um, November 17th is when it comes out. Cool. Okay. Not too long from now. If the U.S. is still around two weeks after the election, <laughs> uh, we'll be able to try it. Uh, it's a uh, crap shoot, man. We'll find it's out. Crap shoot. It's crap shoot. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, it looks like we may have actually accidentally set that to a 30-minute uh, time. So let's move on to the next one. What was it supposed <laughs> to, to be? Just twenty. Oh, was it twenty? Did I? Yeah, I thought well, you know. We, I mean, it's fine. That time, anyways. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, I could have swore you had it set to uh, that. Let me see. What did you have it set to originally? Uh, twelve hundred. Okay, my bad. Okay. That's fine, James. I want all to right, be accurate right. here. I want to be accurate. That's what I'm. Just, I'm just saying. So okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll jump to the next topic now. Cool. Let's talk about Guilty Gear Drive. There was a ton of information that came out about this because there was a big live stream that yeah. arced it over the weekend. 
And in that, they did a ton of stuff. So just before we even, like, discuss it, just to get through some of the info, they announced a new character named Giovanna. They announced... Well, they basically teased Anji, right? Anji is going to be in the game, yeah. most likely. Uh, they said that there's an open beta coming in early 2021. They are going to have 15 characters at launch. There are going to be... Uh, there's a season pass. That season pass will have five more playable characters, five DLC colors uh, for everybody. Two more stages, more story chapters as well. There, it sounds like they're going hard on the story stuff. There will be a story mode. Um, there are different editions. So there's normal edition, which is 60 bucks. Doesn't include season pass one. Releases April 9th. Deluxe edition does include season pass one. Is $85. Releases April 6th. And Ultimate Edition does include Season Pass 1, also includes digital soundtrack and artwork and more colors, and is $99.99, and that also releases April 6th. So there are these two release dates, basically Deluxe and Ultimate, April 6th, Normal Edition, April 9th. However, the final two characters, Anji and whoever else, uh, are going to be not playable until April 9th. Um, so even if you have... The, mm, like other okay. stuff, it's not going to be. You're not going to get the whole roster until that that moment at the end. It's interesting because what does that mean? The the the, the season pass is going to cost right. That's twenty five dollars right there extra for the one version into the deluxe version. I guess season pass will probably be thirty, so you'll save five dollars maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe or maybe you don't save anything at all. Maybe it's just twenty five bucks and they just package it together. Yeah, it, I'm not sure. Um, and then was there any more just straight up? info announced i think that actually might have been well, it that we just let's oh also there's a playstation 5 exclusive multiplayer battle mode oh that's so, right <laughs> i mean i don't know what to make of this but they showed a brief uh set of footage of it and yeah sure enough it looks like there's four characters on the screen at once and maybe two of those are assist characters or whatever is it mk9 assist mode like i don't know i don't or is really it know actually a four mode. player thing <laughs> or is it just it's it's or something yeah, it yeah. Sounds, like, it sounds like a four player game mode to me Maybe yeah like we'll a, see. just a, make right across they game just game. they just add iska mode in there <laughs> right right yeah oh man yeah, i don't know that is playstation 5 exclusive so ps4 yeah. won't have that only way it would be accurate is if they had a button for turning around <laughs> right yo yeah, oh, man what a what an idea <laughs> Oh, man. All right, all right. So, I guess let's talk about Giovanna first. What do you think about this fantastically designed new character, everybody? Um, I don't think she's wacky enough for the Guilty Gear world. I think she's kind of, like I'm thinking like maybe like a Street Fighter world. I'm like, oh, cool, she has a ghost dog, and she do stuff with the ghost dog. But in the Guilty Gear world, it's very like so <laughs> like this dude is strapped <laughs> to a bed he has like a walking bed that's how he lives i don't care about your ghost dog like it's that's very standard in this world so yeah Faust yeah, is like I, a dead yeah. zombie or something like he may have shot I mean, himself in his own bag in his head like and then there's right. this character who's just like she just has suspenders like i don't understand it at all <laughs> i mean like yeah it's very, very I, out of place i said that she's extremely grounded for a Guilty Gear character. The only thing very Guilty Gearish about her is her shoes. <laughs> That's the only place that has excess belts. You know? <laughs> that, like, I think the bottom of her shoes have dog paws on them. Yeah, they do, which is amazing. Which is amazing, by the way. The dog is cool, alright? The dog, I'm down with. I think the dog is pretty sick. I like that you can like and retweet the dog. <laughs> that cracks me up, the little uh, symbol on its head. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you uh, saw you saw Olaf's tweet, right? That in Japan, that recycle symbol uh, stands for like polyurethane, whatever something with a T, <laughs> and so it's always abbreviated as PET. And so basically, oh, you can no. pet the dog. <laughs> wow! Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay. I mean, what's interesting about the character? There's a lot of things to glean from this character, right? First of all, I think that really kind of dashes the hope of Jam fans for mm. Jam being in the first release because she's kind of filling the slot of the close brawler, right? Now, right, okay. so that probably takes that, and it's interesting that they're making this character as a close brawler like that. Um, what's interesting also is that um, in the last game, you can tell they created characters 
with an idea of trying to appeal to different people. There's a lot of people that assume that Kumhae Hyun was trying to appeal to Street Fighter fans, that Jacko had very League of Legends kind of things. To, I'm not to, yeah, to, to, uh, to League of Legends kind of things, because, yeah. like, even even uh, all of uh, Kumhae Hyun's cancels were delayed cancel timing, so they felt like links, you know, uh... Ram Lethal had strings like Tekken characters and stuff. And so people were seeing, making that kind of assumption. I really kind of almost feel like maybe Giovanna is like a, like a, their now modern attempt to appeal to KOF fans. Because, I mean, is she not just like Vanessa and Blue Mary combined together into one character, right? Blue Mary even has a dog. So <laughs> it feels like it's like some weird... Uh, Kind of, yeah, that's right. Ramlethal even had electric wing godfist, right? She literally had a just frame uppercut, just like uh, Tekken characters. And so I feel like maybe now this is their attempt to try to bring in KOF fans by creating someone that appeals a lot to that kind of character design. Because like you said, she's not wacky enough for Guilty Gear, but she fits in KOF like a glove. Like she just yeah. like... Olaf keeps joking that all he has to do is just change the color of her hair to blonde and stuff, and there's Blue Mary, like, <laughs> there she is right there. So that's kind of what I'm interested, that's what I kind of feel like that they're trying to do with the character. Okay. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she would definitely fit in the SNK world. Yeah. That sounds fine. I already forgot what she looked like. It was that forgettable to me, but I assume that you guys are right in your likening of her yeah. to KOF characters. Red hair. And suspenders and a white shirt with a dog on her shoulder. The dog, I remember. The dog is yeah, cool. Everybody, everybody remembers. <laughs> I could, I could be looking at the character live and be forgetting what it looks like as I'm looking at. I, it. Like I think, real bold. I think she bold. looks. Yeah. I think she's a pretty cool looking character. I mean, that's cool. I mean, obviously she's 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 interesting, unlike you know a Molina or a or a Rain or something like that. <laughs> well, well, well. Hoisted by my own How guitar. How turn tables. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I mean, anyway, like, it's, it is cool to see a new character in there. And I was happy to see what I assume is going to be Anji. I think everybody's just assuming it is. Yeah. That's hopefully it's well, correct. I mean, they, they, they literally showed the character. It is Anji. Yeah, it is what Anji. If it's, what if it's Kunimitsu's daughter? What if it's Anji's son? <laughs> what if Anji what? shows up in the next trailer and then Rambo comes in and shoots him up? And yeah, it's actually dude. Rambo. <laughs> or, I'm what sorry. John Rambo is in Guilty Gear. What if Elfelt came in and shot <laughs> shot up Angie? <laughs> no, but, like, I think it's actually... <laughs> I'm glad, I'm really glad Angie is in there. Because, yeah. you know, in that troll sense, when Axel's reveal came out and they showed the butterfly... Yep. And then it turned out to be Axel. That was kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. But yeah, it's right. kind of messed up. So I'm kind of glad that, uh, yeah, they put they put on like it, it wasn't just a be a jerk to Anji fans, and and Anji's actually there. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in this game. Yeah, Let's it's see. gonna be interesting because the unblockable fireball butterfly fireball is definitely not gonna be a thing. Like, there's just no way they're putting that in Strive, you know? Because you can already tell they're trying to tone down some of that factor in the game, I feel like. I can see that, yeah. So, it'll probably just be a lockdown kind of thing, and maybe they'll oh. double down on the armor aspect of him, you know, where he has moves that if he absorbs a hit, it transforms into a different move, you know, kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting. What would you say, Brandon? It's not important. Okay. <laughs> So, oh, Anji in, Giovanna in, and then did you guys watch any of the matches that they had between players who are, uh, you watched them all? I watched them all too, yeah. I, I only managed to see highlights because I was streaming at the time, so I actually didn't get a chance to, to watch it, and I didn't go back to watch it, so. Also, he did. He did. why didn't they have Goichi play Milia? And have Dogura play Nogora Yuki, since Goichi plays Milia. That was so weird to me. Just might have been a choice of the players. Maybe know. they just were like, I really want to use this character. Well, you even know? Dogura was kind of just like, I have no idea what I was doing. And my opponent clearly had an idea what he was doing. Like, he made that joke. Oh. Like, this guy <laughs> tried way harder than I did, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 
And then there was also Fenrich, Kai, and the Leo player. T5, M7, Leo? I don't know. I'm not a guilty gear head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, he's the best Leo. He's the best Leo on, okay. on the sick, planet. Sick. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I really liked how, like, Leo looked like, I mean, I know, I know he is like this anyway, but he seemed like a big jerk. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a guilty gear guy, but I'm aware Look, that's like Leo. you know the so term. I, I, that, that looks fun to me, and he's got a command grab now. You know, is, you know how the fighting game. paying attention. You know how the fighting game community has that term Unga? Yes. It came from Leo. I know. Like, I it know. literally came from that character, so... <laughs> yeah. But I thought that was pretty fun to watch. Kai looks like the same character that I've been seeing for 25 years. Yeah. So I don't know what to say about that. I know he is different in some ways, but... Anyway, have fun, everybody. Uh, we, should not have, we should not have you talking about Guilty Gear at all. <laughs> I mean, I agree with David, though. Like, it's, it's Kai. What do you want No, to but I mean, he's just like, whatever. I know. Uh, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, he's like, oh, my God. Mortal Kombat 11. Like, Molina Sai is, like, shinier now. Oh, my God. This is amazing here, dude. Robocop would vote for Bernie. I... <laughs> Robocop would vote for Bernie. I believe it. God. Alex. He would, he would, he would. Look, um, Guilty I, Gear Strive looks super sick right now. And in fact, what I saw from the matches, uh, it looks like, I like the way the gameplay looks. Like, I like some, I saw some of the more advanced combos that I saw. It still yeah. looks very Guilty Gear, even though it's very, you know, tamed down a little bit. But it still feels like Guilty Gear a lot. So, um, I noticed, the first thing I noticed was they definitely toned down damage. Yes. From yeah. The previous beta, like, like I would say, like they have it. It was. It was I don't know about that. There Dude, were still combos. Know, there were still combos that were forty percent plus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah. definitely I, still happened. That's that's fine. That's guilty gear. No, I'm, I, it's, it's fine with me. Yeah, I'm just saying. I don't know if it's fifty percent down, but like it is. Dev, <laughs> it's definitely. I, I don't think May could kill in four or five dolphins anymore. All right. I guess we'll see. Yeah. The, uh, the also. The the UI has changed. The character select screen has changed again yeah. now. And uh, it's actually interesting because in, like, the official press and, like, uh, I think on, like, some pre-orders places, like, it's a bullet point that the game has a rollback. Like, they yes. are just putting it out there, like, rollback! This, like, this is one of their major features in there. And, you know, like someone said, it, it really means they're doubling down on this and really believing that, believing in their rollback and... You know, with Zynac on board, I, I, I can't imagine that they shouldn't feel that way, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel even if they were swaying away from having good rollback, Zynac would be like, hey, listen, this is probably why it sucks. Or, hey, listen. What, what, is, what is he doing for them? Uh, he, I, I, just, I know he works for Arxis. I don't know his exact oh, job okay. title. But okay, I do sure. know he was an inside guy and pushing rollback on them, you know, from the inside. So. Yeah, I mean, Dang, isn't he, awesome. doesn't he also do some development work on that, too? Or no, not? yeah, I mean, he, he, he 100% works for Arxis. Like, that's right, awesome. yeah, so. Sick. Um, that's awesome yeah, that he ended up there. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, thanks for the sub, Herman. Much obliged. Um, I, I, as far as the character select goes, like, I think it's a little, I don't know, it's, like, less interesting than some Guilty Gear character select screens have been, but it's not something I'm really gonna, I don't care too much about that. I, I did think that the UI looked good. Like it looked, it looked a lot more intelligible to me. The stuff is like, what are you expected if you played a fighting game before? And that seems to make sense. Like I thought I it mean, looked nice. Do, I you, do you remember what the character screen looked like before? <laughs> uh, it was yeah, the white background, yeah. very McDonald's look and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. Yeah, I think that stuff looks better. I also think that. We're gonna get two or three versions of this game in the long run because it's an Arxis right. game. Uh, so they'll probably improve the UI even more in whatever Strive Two is called. Essentially, I mean, I'm not too worried about the UI. I, it's still not my yeah. favorite overall, but there's been worse. There's definitely been worse from major titles and, that have came out in the last. Few years. I mean, it was That's worse in the. Sure. It was worse in the beta. <laughs> the UI was yeah, awful UI, in the yeah, beta, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as far as Nagoriyuki, Goichi played him versus Nage's Faust, and I saw a little bit of a translation of what Goichi said about the character, and, you know, let me know if any of this is wrong, this is just a translation that I read, but basically he, he has a blood power-up mode, 
and that power up makes him gives him stronger options in some ways but if he maxes it out then there's negatives for him like he starts taking damage over time um and so there's it's it's maybe like a robokai kind of idea of like yeah like, they... yourself up yourself. but then if you go too far like you you know you're in trouble yeah well, um, I, I heard that just, if he, he cool. blows it out he goes to one percent hp right but he becomes super strong isn't that the thing with him Oh, uh, I don't know if that's we know I, yet. I haven't heard the that. Like goes, I'm pretty sure that's what our buddy Hero was telling us. Okay. So okay. if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm blaming Hero. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm Fair enough. Sure I mean, uh, some people are saying in the chat that when it fills, his life drains over time or something like that. Yeah, that was yeah. that was my understanding. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't, know what I don't think we've seen it yet. I don't think it's yeah, like I didn't see it when I was watching. Didn't see Goichi do it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So I, you know, what the specifics are, I couldn't really tell you. As far as how Goichi was playing Nagoriyuki, it was just very, like, grounded, fundamental sort of stuff. Like, just real cautious. I'm, I wonder if that's how the character will need to be played, or, like, even if it's I, on, like, who knows. I hope not, because it looked real boring, and that's the character that I was most excited to play. He also, looks sick. he doesn't have an air dash or a double jump. He just has the one hop, so... That worries me in a game full of air dashers. You better have some real, real, real good buttons and way to. I mean, <laughs> we have a character with no super dash in Dragon Ball, and it kind of worked out. So. <laughs> I mean, Potemkin doesn't have a dash. Potemkin doesn't have yeah. some of the stuff. Yeah, right? but Potemkin usually sucks. So that's what I'm saying. I hope Fair this enough. Well, is no, dash. see, Potemkin doesn't suck because of that. Because don't forget, in yeah, Accent right. Core, he was one of the best characters. And yeah. super annoying to fight. <laughs> has nothing to do with the dash stuff, so yeah. He has he has a command dash ish, right? And it looks yeah. like Noguriyuki has a command dash. Yeah. Uh, and then just to briefly touch on some of the other stuff, I think James brought it up briefly, but um, it did seem like the Gatling system was opened up a little bit more, and it did seem like there were more things that you could do in the air. Like somebody did like jump punch air dash jump punch stuff yeah like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so to see those kinds of things added back into it i thought was cool yeah so I, i'm excited for it I, i'm i'm eager to see where this game is gonna go and my favorite thing right now is that they seem to be doing a good job listening to the community in a way that isn't like we're listening to the wrong advice and we're gonna end up with homer's car you know kind of thing so sure. it seems like they're doing a good job with that and uh I also feel like that, uh, I, I don't know why, something in my gut, and again, I have no extra information, so don't anybody quote me on this, but I feel like Bridget is going to be the last character. Like, I feel like that they were going to save someone like Bridget for the last character, or they're going to save Bridget for DLC to try to make money, but bringing Anji back shows that they're trying to bring back some of the characters that haven't shown up since, uh, you know, that didn't show up in Exert, and I think uh, Bridget would be a good one. So in one of the materials that they've put out, speaking of story mode, it says, the trials and tribulations of the series' heroes and villains will finally be resolved. Discover the astonishing truth awaiting at the end of all things. Is this the last gear? And also, are there characters that you think, I don't know gear story, right? But are there characters that you think could be in the game based on the idea that this may be like where they're huh. trying to wrap up stuff story wise. That's a good question. Robo I mean, the, I feel like that means like Elfelt has to come back. Valentine uh, might come back or something like that. But I don't know. It would be interesting. I know. I know they're making a big deal out of the story because they're also re re releasing a bunch of like catch up on the story stuff. You know, uh, yeah. because the story is like. 18 hours or something like that. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I know zero about Guilty Gear lore, so... Okay. I'm just excited to play the game. It, it yeah. looks really fun at the moment. You know, the I definitely agree. The guilty, so someone asked, do the Guilty Gear games have good stories? They have stories and very, very long stories. <laughs> it's very anime, though. So, like, you just watch it and you're like, okay... <laughs> This power thing. Here's these weird people who are hiding in this room who are like in shadows and they're like secret society. Here, oh my God, the gear is super power. Oh, this thing exploded. Like that's kind of the story to me, and I'm I'm not sure. Like I watched all of uh, 
sign story, and I don't think I could sum it up for you at this point, so... I didn't hear the word good in that whole summation. Yeah, yeah. Con- point out. convoluted is a good way to put it, that grinning Oni says, so... <laughs> Well, Hello. you can watch it on YouTube, and there's stuff yep. like that. You can catch up on it if you, if you need like. That's it, though. We've run out of time. Excited about this. That's for sure. There was a lot of cool stuff there. All right. Well, do you want to get to the interview here? Uh, let's take a break, and then we can set up the interview. And then when we come back, we'll have the interview with Phage on uh, accessibility in the fighting game community. So be right back, guys. Be right back. The closed captions didn't know that we were supposed to be muted. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was have to remember about that. That's definitely going to be a new thing that I'm going to have to handle. I was just handling your slurping. Oh, man. Is it putting slurp in the chat and the cold cap? Oh, that was some tasty slurping. I know, I appreciate it. Ooh. All right, well, I'm good to go. <laughs> hey, thanks, Paratestes, for the subscription. I'm very curious to see how this CC will handle that. <laughs> Dude, I got hairy balls on you. <laughs> it did. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is masterful, all right? So how did it get paratestes? Mm, it didn't get paratestes. Okay. Oh, well, it, I mean, kind of. <laughs> I mean, did it spell it fully out, or...? It sure did. It sure did. Okay, awesome. And of course, Alrighty. you know, we're talking about two of the testaments in Guilty Gear, right? So, you know, there's testament, and we're just talking about a mirror match, clearly. <laughs> pair of testes, right? So that's what we're talking about. I was talking about balls, James. So you were talking about Kumhei Hyun, right? Throwing out the the, the fireballs. Family show. God. The fireballs. Don't be weird. Alright, let's come back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Tuesday show. Coming up next, we're going to have an interview for you guys set up over here. Uh, is there anything you want to say about it before we just jump right into it? Um, no, just uh, bring on Phage. Let him talk about accessibility. All right, let's do this then. All right, so let's jump over to the interview screen over here. Welcome, Phage, a.k.a. Brian. What would you rather have us call you, Phage or Brian? Uh, whichever is more comfortable for you, uh, I respond to both at this point. I'm well trained. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, basically, uh, tell us. So, obviously, I had mentioned before the break started that we were ta- we brought you on here to talk about accessibility in the fighting game community. If people have noticed, we have closed captioning set up as a, an extension to Twitch on our stream today so that you know if you are deaf or hard of hearing you can actually have the closed captions down there and you know this was something that i wanted to do and i had already been trying to figure out a way to do it and so it's actually very fortuitous timing that we have you on here brian to talk about accessibility so uh let us know like like, tell us what you kind of want to go over and cover yeah, sure. Um, so before I jump into talking about any of the specifics, uh, it's important to establish that when you're talking about accessibility, there is only so much expertise that someone can gain academically. Uh, at the end of the day, when when discussing accessibility, it's the concept of breaking down specific barriers to access that uh, arise as a result of disability. Mm-hmm. And so the true experts on any given barrier are going to be the people actually experiencing it. So as a result, I've, I've absorbed a lot of information from uh, a number of different people, and I'll, I'll mention a few of them in a moment, uh, but I'm truly only uh, the expert on my own experience and my own disability. So uh, while I am going to be trying to share a lot of different concepts with you folks today, um, it, through the, the lens of fighting games and the fighting game community, uh, please keep in mind that there are a number of experts who have experience that I will never have, and their word should always be taken before mine okay. when discussing those specific barriers. 
Um, so first, I do want to mention the team over at Can I Play That, um, led by, uh, although they would hate to admit it, Courtney Craven, uh, along with Grant Stoner, Aiden Strahun, Christy Smith, Ben Bayless, uh, Moraine, aka uh, ActiveBit, and Steve Saylor. Uh, Can I Play That is a, uh, a platform that produces reviews uh, by disabled gamers for mm. disabled gamers. Uh, and uh, importantly to me, because uh, I just had a, a review published on there myself, which was very exciting, uh, it is a paper that is, or, or rather a website that is seen as uh, sort of the journal of note in the field. It's commonly referenced in industry uh, presentations and things of that nature. Uh, and the, the folks that run it have also maintained uh, journalistic independence by not taking any funding from anyone in the industry. Okay, okay. Um, so when we when you talk about people learning about accessibility, these are the folks that are going out of their way to share their experience and, and go through the effort and the uh, emotional struggle at times to put down on paper what, what they're going through. Uh, additionally, on the blind side of things, of course, I'm sure you folks have heard of Blind Warrior Sven, the excellent Street Fighter player <laughs> over in the yes. EU. Um, you may also have heard of Rattlehead, who talked with uh, NRS in order to get sounds put in for when you can interact with uh, things in the background in Injustice 1. Mm -hmm. uh, I do also want to mention Sightless Combat and Super Blind Man, two other folks that you may have heard uh, in, in the field of accessibility who have taught me a lot about what I, of what I know about blind accessibility and those barriers. Uh, I do also want to mention a number of other folks, uh, Chaos Bringer, Deng, aka Dengster, Don't Run Off Zero One, Victor Andres, Warden, Glitched Vision, Fox Machina, and Blind Press, all of whom have talked with me at different points about blind-based barriers. Um, I really <clears> appreciate <throat> the time and effort they've spent uh, bringing me up to speed there. Uh, on the deaf or hard of hearing side of things, uh, there's Chris, aka Deaf Gamers TV, who importantly is putting together a list of, or rather a guide to different auto captioners for streams. Uh, he's doing that with Sasia Hotchle and Voxan1, so keep an eye out for that on Twitter. Um, this is, you know, I have some things that I tend to recommend to people that I know have, have worked well for, other, for, for folks that, that do need captions to get the most out of a stream, but they are the real experts and they're going to be sharing that expertise shortly. Uh, along similar lines, Stacey of Gotham, uh, Morgan Baker, uh, two other uh, people who willingly have shared their, their expertise with me and I really appreciate it. Uh, more on the mobility based side of things, of course you folks know about Broly and Wheels, um, <laughs> two absolute legends here in the My US FGC. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, Tokimeki Emily, who uh, yes. frequently shares her experience not only on the mobility side of things, uh, but also on the cognitive side as well. Uh, you may not realize it, but Ultra David, you are actually an advocate for uh, mobility-based barriers when you discussed uh, your own struggles and the controllers that you now use that, that allow you to play more effectively. Cool. Uh, <laughs> there's also folks like uh, Wheelchair Gamer, uh, Brandon, aka Accessible Gamer, and Van Tezel, uh, the Thor to my Black Widow when I play Avengers. Uh, on the company side of things, there are folks who are more, more generalist. Uh, Ian Hamilton, whose name is synonymous with accessibility uh, across the industry. He's consulted on multiple fighting games as well as just about every other game you've heard of. Dale Cruz, who used to work at Twitch. Um, and was instrumental in improving the accessibility of the platform. Over at EA, you've got the team of Karen Stevens and James Berg, both of whom have uh, shared valuable insights with me. At Ubisoft, the in inimitable, indomitable Cherry Thompson and their teammate David <laughs> Tisserand, who were behind uh, the first audio described trailer for a AAA game uh, oh. coming out with uh, AC Valhalla. Uh, over at Square Enix, you've got Ame at Microsoft, Tara Volker, who drove accessibility at Mixer, hey, along I know Bryce Tara, Johnson. Uh, yeah, uh, she's fantastic. Uh, Bryce Johnson and the rest of his team who were behind the Xbox Adaptive Controller yeah. at NetherRealm. Finally, I promise we're almost near the end of this rant. Uh, within fighting games at NetherRealm, um, there's Danish Sied, who uh, is one of their UI designers, who was a big part of getting narration on a large number of the menus there, huh. along with Tyler Lansdowne, who worked <laughs> with the team in order to provide alt text, which we'll talk about a lot more later on, uh, for uh, all of the tweets that are going out from the NRS accounts. Yeah. And finally, at Capcom, uh, Carolyn Dow, who I know has gone out of her way repeatedly to advocate and, and teach about the use of alt text, to the social media team, as well as working with the production team in order to make sure that the CPT online events were being broadcast in stereo. So those oh. are the folks, those are the oh. giants whose shoulders I'm riding in on oh. here, right? And I'm just hoping <laughs> I don't screw up too many things um, uh, as we move along. Uh, so 
first, when you're talking about accessibility in fighting games, it's a little bit different than discussing it in, in other games like, say, Assassin's Creed, because so much of fighting games and the community of fighting games happens outside of the game itself, right? You've got combo videos, you've got uh, silly memes that people are posting Social on media, Twitter. yeah. Exactly. You've got the Twitch streams, which you've already broached here with the, uh, the inclusion of closed captions for the first time. Um, there's this entire environment around the game itself that also needs to be interacted with in order to learn how to play the game in the first place, find an appropriate opponent, uh, compete uh, uh, on the world stage, right? Um, so the concepts of accessibility that frequently would only be applied to the game itself extend beyond that when you're talking about the FGC. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to, to cover two quick things in social media because they're pretty yeah. easy things that folks in chat can, can do and uh, which uh, I've already talked with you folks about before. Um, the first, of course, is uh, if you're if you're running a stream, providing closed captions. Um, there are uh, extensions that do it, like the one by Gooseman that's being used on the stream here. Yes. Uh, that works with any streaming uh, software that you're using. There's also a plugin that you can get for OBS by uh, a gentleman by the name of Rat with a Compiler, uh, and he uh, actually leverages the built-in. Uh, captioning tools that are present in the Twitch player. It, it can support captions, it's just you need to provide that captioning stream along with your video and mm, audio. Right, okay. uh, and that works, that's OBS specific, but it works quite well. So if, if anyone in chat needs to get one of those up and running, hmm. definitely let me know. Well, uh, is, the other, is, oh, is yeah, there yeah. any way that we can contact them for potential like uh, features or you know enhancements or anything like that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Gooseman's Twitter is talk to me Gooseman. Um, okay. Uh, I I'll tweet it at you once we're we're done here, so that you can find him directly. Uh, obviously, his extension works great, and I believe it's one of the ones that uh, Def Gamers TV Chris is going to be mentioning in that upcoming guide. Um, I believe there's also a testing mode for Talk with a Pirate Day where you can have everything translated into pirate yeah, speak. Yeah, I can do uh -huh. that. I can actually do that. Uh, it's it, it was one of the options that I was able to click, and I did not do that. So, <laughs> You want me to do that right now? I can actually turn it in, turn it on and see how no, it no, looks. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't okay. do it. I know there are some folks in chat who are relying on the caption, so it's probably best that we don't. But yeah. uh, if you're doing a meme stream at some point, it might be fun to play around with. Uh, and so the other side of, of the spectrum, of course, here we're, we've talked about something that helps folks that uh, are, are deaf or hard of hearing. Uh, for folks who are blind, it's very helpful to take into careful consideration the audio balance of your stream, as well as to provide descriptions of any images that you're posting on Twitter or in Discord. Now, on Twitter, there's an option called alt text, where when yes. you're typing up your tweet, you'll see a little line down underneath the image you've attached that says add description. Mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. type in a description there, and when the screen reader that these folks are using to read Twitter gets to the image, it'll read your description instead of just embedded image. Yeah, That's uh, so cool, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, it's for images and for GIFs. Um, so it works for both of those right now. Well, uh, yeah. It's now, something that I've been I've I've had someone mention that to me, and I've been trying to type in as many alt uh, descriptions <laughs> in there. And the and awesome. it, interesting, so that people know this. I mean, it's like a thousand characters. So like <laughs> sometimes oh, really? okay. sometimes when I put in alternate descriptions, I even just like type in a bunch of extra jokes in there and stuff. But I know for a while I was just like posting up all these Teppan pictures, and it was probably boring for me to just type in. A picture of a windscreen with me at this rink, <laughs> like seven thousand <laughs> times. But you know, it's it's it is important. It's something that we have to think about as influencers. You know what I mean? Especially yeah, as agree. influencers. So uh, the person who tweeted at you about that, I think it was what three or four months ago. Yeah. Um, um, funny story. That was actually me. Was it you? Uh, oh, okay, okay. There you go. There you go. I couldn't remember who it was, but there you go. It makes a lot of sense. So, uh, small world. Yep. One That's thing great. to keep in mind with this, though, uh, when you're when you're thinking about posting in Discord, alt text doesn't yet exist there. So, if mm. you're you're posting an image or a GIF in there, you've got to type type out a separate description in order to make sure that blind folks who are reading reading through the chat know what's going on. Um, I do want to skip back over to uh, the idea of sound balance real quick. Uh, it's important not only for tournament streams, but also for combo videos. Yeah. So uh, when someone who is blind is watching a stream, uh, or playing the game for that matter, they're relying heavily on audio cues in order to determine what's going on. 
right? It's it, right. there. There is no visual indicator that they can get, and so they're relying on things like the presence of stereo audio, which, uh, for instance, doesn't exist in any of the previous Guilty Gear games, but will for Strive, which is very exciting. Ooh, okay, um, okay. And uh, actually, isn't present in Tekken Seven either. Um, so making wow. sure that you have a, a stereo output for your audio is is really important for helping them follow what's going on. Uh, additionally, there are issues with certain stages. So uh, just about every stage in Street Fighter other than the grid has some sort of background audio going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as a result, there it, it is more difficult to catch audio cues in the game. Um, there are also some things that we can see visually that are missing audibly. For instance, a regular counter hit. Now, a crush counter, yeah, you can absolutely hear that. But regular um... counters don't have a separate audio cue. So right now, something that blind players tend to uh, play around, either assuming that a counter hit's going to land with a frame trap, um, or just doing the same combo regardless of whether or not it's a counter. I'm sure there are other strategies out there. You know, by all means, uh, Sven, if you watch this and there's something awesome that you would like to share, <laughs> hit me up, hit up. Um, some of the other folks I mentioned are actually part of the beginner Street Fighter uh, group that I've got running, and uh, they regularly share sound tech uh, in order to get everyone up to speed. Um, and uh, along similar lines with, uh, with competitions, it is useful to keep in mind that you are limiting the information available to these players right. by allowing stages other than the grid. Um, which, of course, if you've got someone who uh, is, is playing well, as m obviously many of these players do, you don't want them to, to be playing at a disadvantage uh, as a result of the stage that's being played. Dude, I, I'm, I'll tell you right now, that Guile stage, even as you know, <laughs> someone who can see, when that stupid airplane shoots the machine gun every single time, I always feel like something happened. Like every time it happens, I'm always like, wait, what's going on? Oh, wait, it's the stupid plane in the background again. <laughs> so, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and, and I mean, there are issues with that that vary a bit from game to game. There are stages in Mortal Kombat that are better or worse. In general, training stages are the way to go just because, uh, number one, for folks that have limited vision, they tend to have the highest contrast. So that in mm. stages where there would be visual cues lost that might otherwise be accessible, training stage usually makes those work the best. Uh, and of course, the audio issue that, that I mentioned just a moment ago as well. Uh, now, if you're making a combo video on one of these stages, again, picking one that doesn't have background audio is useful, but also making sure that your game audio is a lot higher than whatever sound you're playing. If it's someone who's blind who's tuning in and uh, you don't have a transcript of what all the combos are and you don't have the game audio turned up, they're hearing a nice clip of some hype music. Uh, <laughs> that's the main thing they're taking away. Right. Um, so being mindful of this, and uh, frankly, transcripts are useful across the board if you're creating content. Um, they're great for screen reader accessibility. Uh, they're also really useful uh, if your captions are getting messed up. So if you don't have time to correct your captions, um, from the auto captions that YouTube provides, uh, a written transcript can help to fix any issues that show up there. Well, um, I, I did, uh, there was one checkbox here on the extension that allows it to record things to a transcript. So uh, at some, I might, I, and I did check that for this episode. So we'll definitely get transcripts about, um, what did you say about platypus? Dingleberry platypus and Harry. Yeah, that means there's official <laughs> transcripts of Harry Balsanya yeah, and Dingleberry uh, platypus. Right. So that'll <laughs> that'll be officially in our transcript. But what I might be able to do then is take that transcript and put it as a link onto our YouTube pages or something like that. You know. Uh, yeah, that's onto good. Exactly. YouTube videos. So yep. there you go. And and that's great not only for accessibility reasons but also for folks who want to write about the episode, uh, either to quote you or, or something along those lines, <laughs> it's easy for them to find the actual Oh, oh okay, okay, I'm actually that. gonna turn it off now. No, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, James, can you tell us about that famous tweet real quick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean Sigma Nuts Cat Butts, right? That's the one, mm -hmm. that's, that's... Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, so, uh, We've talked a lot about uh, some issues that rise up around uh, visual and audible uh, accessibility barriers in fighting games and around fighting games. This is not an exhaustive list, right? We haven't even mentioned things like uh, menu narration, where a lot of the narration that exists, for instance, in Street Fighter V, happens after you choose a selection rather than before. And practice modes uh, across the board 
don't have narration. So, for instance, the Mortal Kombat 11 practice mode, um, there's actually a 10-page a written transcript of every option on every menu oh, in geez. that guide that folks can access with a screen reader in order to try and set up what they're trying to get, get wow. to happen. Dang. Um, and uh, along similar lines, with a lot of things like uh, the built-in tutorial, tutorials in Mortal Kombat, uh, they're not accessible. Um, things like optical character recognition uh, don't work particularly well, and they're not narrated. So for, for uh, blind players, they rely on guides they can find that are written out, that have uh, frame data associated with them, or uh, provide different combo routes. Uh, all of the frame data that's included in NRS games, which it's fantastic that they have it built in, but it's not accessible to folks using a screen reader. Um, now, on the other hand, on, on the Capcom end of things, of course, we don't have frame data that's in the game, but we do have folks like uh, Dark Onion and his team who have built FAT, right? And uh, I bring that up specifically because that team has actually uh, worked with a number of blind users so that the next edition of FAT will have much better screen reader accessibility, Ooh, cool. especially on the mobile app. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. I know uh, some of the folks in the chat actually contributed to that. Uh, oh, awesome. Dexter and, cool. uh, and uh, Don't Run Off uh, were, are both a part of that testing team. Uh, so I'm very excited to see that coming. It, it should be phenomenal. Um, so uh, I, I do want to move on because I, I know that your time here is limited. Of course, I could go on and on about the, the <laughs> different aspects that these folks have taught me about visual uh, accessibility and audible accessibility for another hour at least. Um, but I want to try and uh, hit on some of the things that you might already think about accessibility um, in, in Street Fighter and, and see what you have right and what you have wrong and see if we can correct any misconceptions that exist. So if I were to say, okay, I have uh, a new player who needs a character in Street Fighter who is accessible, um, who would come to mind and why? Ed. Oh, okay. All right, mm, Ed, why do you sure. say he has, easy, he has easy inputs. Uh, so what do you define as an easy input? Yeah. Uh, just hitting three buttons, right? Right, so for his Psycho Upper, you've got the three button option. Um, or two buttons or three if you want the EX. Of course, the kick is the same way. Um, what about uh, his uh, one, two, three, right? That's a, a mashed input, right? right. So you're yeah. thinking, okay, you know, if there's someone who can only use one or two fingers, that might work out really well because uh, they've got access to multiple different specials all using just these one or two fingers. Mm -hmm. um, however, there is a difference here between accessibility and approachability. Right. So... Yeah. Uh, approachability okay. is the concept of a character who you can look at their, their combos or their input list and it's not intimidating, right? It's easy for someone right. that doesn't have a lot of experience okay. in the genre to pick up and go with it. Um, whereas accessibility is specifically on the basis of access barriers. So as I mentioned, Ed is more accessible for uh, a, a certain group of disabled players. Um, however, he's actually not accessible to me because mm -hmm. I can't mash buttons. Um, it causes extreme pain and rapid fatigue, so I can't <laughs> do his one, two, three move. I like I physically can't do it. Um, along similar lines, you know, Honda, I can't do the slap. Right. Um, Chun, I always have to do the quarter circle inputs. Sure. Um, yeah, because so, I, I I was thinking someone like because I say this about uh, Cami in Street Fighter Five a lot. I feel like she's very straightforward, kind of basic, doesn't have any like crazy things. So would that actually make it easier to turn her into a more accessible character? And again, it, it's going to depend on the end user, right? Accessibility is defined by a right. specific person's barriers. Right. So okay. what's accessible okay. for one person may not necessarily be for another. And there's also the concept of accessibility not as an end point, but as an ongoing process, whereas additional things are discovered, uh, barriers that initially were brought part of the way down. So for instance, for me, no matter what, I get fatigued faster than other people do. It's neuro neurological issues in my hands. But if we, uh, so, so a character that's accessible to me is still less accessible than to someone with fully healthy limbs because mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, they don't have the, the nerve issues that are causing me fatigue. So there's yeah. uh, always a soft barrier there. Right. Now, if there were a way to uh, produce inputs for a character that didn't require me to move 
any of my anything that was connected to a muscle that would make it more accessible <laughs> to me right if i could just right. use my brain right but that's not that technology that exists so it's not yeah. something that we can use to improve accessibility yet um but yes uh sorry i went off on a bit of a tangent there but the idea no. of kami as a character that's accessible it absolutely true she is a character that is more accessible to me uh along some of her combo routes that have relatively uh extended timing but still good damage and okay so um basically everything out of her standing medium punch because it gives you so much frame advantage um and has still has a, a decently long recovery animation um that gives me enough time to hit another input without too much issue but for someone else who struggles with quarter circle inputs that might not be the case yeah, makes that makes sense. Yeah. makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's uh, it's interesting because then it's I mean that's just like uh, obviously accessibility is just one of those things that like we all need to take into account. But obviously it's a lot of work because there's a lot of different kinds of accessibility, sure. right? Because you could have one where it's oh the muscles aren't able to move. You have the situation like Broly. Then you have blind players. You have deaf players, and it's all very different. And you know it's it's a lot of extra work and. You know, I saw some people in the chat saying, like, in their company, they're trying to do accessibility stuff. But you know how it always is with upper management and budget and all that <laughs> stuff like that. Like, what do you what do you tell those people, you know, who, who are in charge of the budget who have to be like, oh, I can serve this tiny audience, but it's super important that we do. You know, how do we fund that kind of thing, you know? So there are two basic concepts. Uh, that, that tend to help in terms of the, the, the payback you're going to get for making something more accessible. Mm -hmm. Number one, it is always expanding your audience, and it's expanding your audience as the population is getting older. Um, the older people get, the more likely they are to have a disability. So if you are accounting for that, you are allowing people that were playing your games when they were 20 to continue playing them into their 50s and 60s mm -hmm. rather than losing that it's portion. Coming up, Jane. I know, uh, I know, <laughs> I know. I was going to say something too, dude. <laughs> Um, so there's that aspect of it, but also accessibility and, and things that contribute to accessibility are frequently overall uh, quality of life increases. You think about things like the microphone, which was initially an accessibility tool, closed captioning, which, you know, we think of, okay, well, you know, it's great if you're deaf and hard of hearing, but also what if you just have to watch a stream on mute? Now you can actually understand what's happening on commentary. Yeah. Um, so, so much of this process improves a product no matter who's using it in addition to expanding potential current audience and preparing you to maintain that audience for a longer period of time. That's true. Actually, um, all those people who always tweet at me, they're like, man, whenever James is on commentary, I have to mute the stream. That means they can still <laughs> read what I'm saying. This is perfect, exactly. actually. Oh, exactly. This is yeah. perfect. That's, so th that's good for them. That's good for them. Okay. I, I'm, I'm also not so sure that it's a, it's a little group of people. It's a small group of people. I mean, I had a lot of, of people tweet at me about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. uh, many of us will like have injuries over time, and so although you may be able-bodied like for most of your life, many of us will have at least phases that we go through where we're not going to have that. We're, we're going to be limited in some capacity, uh, and so I, you know, taking in that into account, I feel like makes you realize that there is a bigger population of people who could be served by this uh, than just thinking of it quite narrowly. Absolutely. And there is one last point that I'd like to make. Uh, I know that we may be running a bit short on time here. Um, the, the idea of when you are talking about a disabled person who's playing a video game, that you center the person rather than the disability. Um, and this applies beyond video games as well. But uh, there is a tendency for especially able-bodied people to say, oh, you know, player X, can do why that means anyone can do it you know that's great that's so inspirational mm. and this is something that's right. it's referred to as yeah. inspiration porn um and <laughs> it, it it puts the focus on the accessibility uh the, the the person's disability and the fact that they're still able to do something rather than focusing on the very real uh barriers that mm -hmm, still mm -hmm. exist for other people's access right and okay. also the individual skill of the player involved right like are, are you telling me that if everyone could provide inputs to Street Fighter V, they would be as good as Broly? Like, are you kidding? He's a whiff-punishing god <laughs> whose knowledge of neutral goes beyond what most people will ever grasp right. over the For course sure. of a lifetime. And when you diminish someone's 
contributions just by focusing on the one thing that they can do that you weren't expecting them to be able to do, you lose that whole person. Yeah. You lose the individual and what really makes them uh, a, uh, a a player, right, or 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 a person. Uh, so I, I do I did want to mention that because it is uh, something that does come up on occasion, and I would encourage people who uh, are listening today to make sure that if you see that. You focus on the person and not the right. disability. Yeah, no, but, that's why I tell Wheels he sucks all the time. Just, <laughs> just keep even. I, by the way, uh, Brian, just so you know, I know we have these topic timers, but this is an important topic. Yeah. I would rather cut off any of these other topics than to obey this topic timer for this subject here. So don't feel pressured by this clock right here. In fact... I'm just killing this clock right now. So you don't even have to see okay. it anymore. You don't even have to see it anymore. So like I said, I'd rather cut out anything else. So yeah. take your time and please go over what, you know, everything that you wanted to talk about here. Uh, you know, cause like I said, this is a, this is an important topic and, you know, along with, you know, we strive a lot. I know on this show in particular about inclusivity in terms of gender and in, in terms of ethnicity and stuff, but accessibility is one that we don't address a lot because it's just one that it's so easy to overlook. And so, yeah. you know, having this conversation, I think is really important. So along the lines of increasing accessibility at, at a community level, uh, you know, we've covered a lot of things with alt text and, and sort of the, the basics of how to make your community welcoming uh, to folks that do have disabilities. Um, I, I would like to mention uh, there, uh, I've referred a few times to guides that are written for screen readers. Um, it's not something that is particularly difficult to do. You just need to learn what the format is and then you're good to go. So if there's anyone out there who knows the basics of a character in literally any fighting game, let me know. I will teach you what you need to know in order to get it in a format that is screen reader friendly. Um, okay. And uh, Super Blind Man, AKA Brandon Cole, who I mentioned earlier, um, uh, he actually has a site called Breaking Down Walls, or, or Breakdown Walls, and they have an entire section of these guides that are written specifically for screen readers. Le uh, can, um, can, can you give some examples of things that break screen readers in guides? I'm, I'm just curious, like, I, I, I'm just trying to process how that works. Sure. So a lot of it is things that are weird or inconsistent uh, in terms of uh, uh, capitalization or the uh, the way that you're referring to things in a combo. It's very important to be consistent. Okay. Um, so, for instance, if you're capitalizing an entire word, it may be read as that word or it may be read as each letter individually. Mm. Um, uh, additionally, you can naturally introduce pauses of different lengths by using commas or uh, breaking for a new paragraph. And so for a lot of games that these guys have already been written for, there's a specific format that's used to break up, for instance, um, different possible endings for combo strings in Mortal Kombat, huh. um, where it's, it's necessary to include all of the different ways that you can finish uh, a, a specific string. And so each one is broken off with the different uh, frame data attached to it at the end, as well as whether or not it's cancelable, how much oh, wow. pushback it's got, things like that. Um, so I'll, okay. uh, I'll, I'll send you guys the link afterwards so you can take a look yeah. at some of these guides. Um, uh -oh. And some of them, like uh, Sodium Jim over in the EU, um, contributed to some of the Mortal Kombat guides. Uh, his collector guide and Garrus uh, combo guides are, are up there. They're a part of this, so it's not... It's not something that, that you have to be super good at, but there are people at the upper end of play and, and involved in commentary who are contributing these things, which is phenomenal. That's great. Um, so a question for you, uh, just just to reiterate to people, there's there've been a couple of sites that we talk about. So can I play that? Is that can I play that dot com? I'm assuming. Uh, then? Yes. Okay. Can I play yes. that dot com, which reviews games in terms of accessibility for different disabilities, right? And then right. So uh, each. Uh, review that they have written is written by someone with a specific disability on the basis of that disability. So when I wrote my Hitbox review, uh, which was actually one of the, the first reviews they had of hardware, it was very exciting Ooh, cool. for me. Oh, okay. um, and it was uh, written from the perspective of someone who has mobility issues. Um, there are guides up there for folks, or, or reviews for people that are deaf or hard of hearing. There are also pieces that relate disability and gaming in manners in a manner that isn't specific to um, uh, reviewing a given game. So things like uh, people who experience chronic pain, like me, who uh, <laughs> deal with some of that pain by playing games. And 
the different mindsets that they use these games to to assist them in entering uh, in order to deal with pain or uh, emotional trauma, or whatever the case may be. Um, a, a whole lot of talk on there about okay. uh, the that entire ecosystem and that interaction between uh, the the individual as a person and all their barriers um, and, and trauma and the way that games can be used to explore those and, and games that are and are not accessible depending on what it is exactly you're dealing with at your end. Also, also uh, just to quickly uh, tag this in there, uh, Dangster, yeah, that was the other one, breakdownwalls.net. So if you want to check that one out as well, so it's caniplaythat.com, breakdownwalls.net for those of you who yes. want to look into those. Uh, and both of these sites are completely screen reader friendly. Um, I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my long list of people, um, uh, Moraine, AKA ActiveBit, uh, he is a very talented website designer and uh, helps these different sites put together all of the correct labels for their buttons, for their drop down menus, nice. uh, to make sure that anyone who's using a screen reader can get to every option easily. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, uh, I did see a question earlier in chat about games that I can play, so I figured I would, uh, I would mention that briefly. Um, and uh, also the blind mode in Last of Us 2 has been mentioned, so uh, there are some connections I can make there uh, with some of the folks that contributed to that as well as play fighting games. Um, so for me, my issues are uh, largely neurological and neuromuscular. I run into issues with particularly fast inputs. Um, drawn out combos that have fast inputs are not great. Um, so as a result, Street Fighter V has actually been a great game for me because <laughs> most of your combo starting buttons that aren't lights have really extended recovery yes. frames. Yeah. Um, also, a lot of times it allows me to switch from finger to finger. Uh, the more I'm using the same finger, the worse it gets. Oh. Uh, so as a result, games like Dragon Ball Fighters that rely heavily on an auto combo system tend not to go so well with my hands. Mm, um, right. And uh, similarly, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which is my favorite fighting game of all time. Uh, I'm sure there will be some opinions in the chat about that one. Um, also, if you play Dante, I assume that you eat cereal with a fork. But uh, <laughs> I, Kevin, uh, sure. I played Captain America and uh, Power Stone specifically because if I got any hit, I could usually confirm it into Power Stone and then do mm. uh, Heavy Punch Shield Loop into Standing Heavy Punch Loops that Interesting. did absurd amounts of damage. It, it was a very huh. easy in terms of timing, uh, very yeah. easy on my hands in terms of input speed, uh, and it was still viable in the game. You know, you had to watch out for the yeah. counter tag, but uh, I had Gamora to deal with that if, if need be. <laughs> um, cool. so, so that's that's sort of how I handle things at my end. Uh, I am generally playing using a stick. Um, I actually also use a stick for things like first person shooters. Uh, where I'm moving around with the stick and using my mouse with my right hand uh, because it removes the stress off of individual fingers. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and similarly, I, I prefer sticks with larger buttons. Uh, I primarily play on a Panthera as opposed to a hitbox where a lot of the buttons are intended just for a single finger. Uh, for a similar right. reason, I want to hit the okay. button with more than one finger at a time. Yeah, okay, okay. Moving around with the joystick is a really interesting idea. I'm going to have to think about that for myself, the, too. I like that. I remember that's what I wanted to do in Rocket Arena. I, wanted... <laughs> I, could, I could definitely see that being useful. <laughs> so there are some games it works for and some it doesn't. Um, if you want to try it out, a game that works surprisingly well through Steam Controller is Planet Side 2, and it's also free. Um, so you can okay. use mouse and controller or mouse and stick. Uh, completely interchangeably on that game. Uh, it accepts the controller basically as keyboard inputs, so it's not like true simultaneous input huh. from the game side. Okay. Interesting. Um, but it does work quite well through the Steam controller interface. Um, I uh, have played it on Hitbox and played it with Stick, and both have ups and downs, um, but it's it's quite a lot of fun. Um, also, I know that Kinder Party huh. loves the game, so if you need someone to dive in with you, you can hit up me, you can hit up KP, um, you can also hit up St. Cola, who I'm trying to get to try it out. Um, so lots of different <laughs> Hit him up before he's tried it. Try it. <laughs> yeah, bother him. Bug him to play this game for me. Uh, Thank you. You know, you, you can even play the accessibility angle here, because Planet Side 2 doesn't do a great job for colorblind folks. Mm. Um, and, and of course, colorblind being a sex language 
uh, gene, it's more likely to happen in men than in women. So you can just tell him like, oh yeah, I'm on the red team and then play the purple team and be like, oh, I'm sorry. I, did I just find and kill you? Wow, that was you. I thought you were on my team. Oh, the colors, <laughs> I just couldn't tell. Um, okay. <laughs> which, uh, you know, brings me back to within our, our the beginner Street Fighter group that I have. Um, because we made an effort to make things accessible, about half the group is playing with one disability or another. Um, and Dengster, who's in the chat, uh, became infamous for a particular uh, match that he had. We, we do first to fives uh, every Wednesday, usually. Uh, and he lost a game, got double perfected. Uh, and uh, of course, the issue he had was that the sun was in his eyes. Dengster <laughs> being someone who's completely without sight. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's sort of the running joke is that, oh, yeah, the sun just in his eyes. Oh, um, so you're welcome, Dengster. That's now immortalized for everyone to teach you with uh, from now until the end of time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I mean, he might have just learned that from Smug, right? Because Smug says that all the time, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly the sun was in my eyes. <laughs> he is saying that in the chat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he actually said that. <laughs> That's actually funny. Good stuff, Dangster. See, great minds think alike. There, someone is in my eyes, man. It was. In my life. And so I saw someone bring up uh, The Last of Us Two and the blind accessibility that's there. Um, first of all, two of the folks that were mentioned in my long list, one of whom is uh, on the Can I Play That Team, Steve Saylor, um, as well as Super Blind Man, aka Brandon Cole. He's the one who's got BreakdownWalls.net with all those screen reader accessible mm -hmm. guides. Both of them, uh, along with uh, Morgan Baker were all con consultants on Last of Us okay, 2. They were a okay. part of the accessibility of that game. And a lot of the concepts that exist in that game were using almost a sonar-like system um, to figure out exactly where things are oh, spatially in order to go in and interact with them. Um, a lot of those same concepts are why Street Fighter V does projectiles really well. Because the stereo balancing for the projectile is really precise. Huh. So you can actually tell where on the stage the projectile is based on the sound in your ears. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's and, idea. yeah I, I never thought about it until I was talking about it with Dang one time. And again, this is why I had those list of people, because these yeah. are the things that they teach me. Um, and, and I closed my eyes and threw a fireball with Ryu, and I could tell when it was at the midpoint of the stage uh, based on the frame that it was at. Uh, so cool. OK. Uh, and another Good stuff, Street Fighter. <laughs> Street Fighter V, uh, some of the characters have costumes that actually have a sound associated yes. with crouching. Yes. Uh, uh, like Cammy, so Cammy in the bison yeah. outfit. There's the guys with the chains that the chains jingle when they crouch and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, so that can be really helpful. Uh, it, it provides an additional sound cue that isn't always present. You know, otherwise you can't really tell if your opponent huh. is standing or blocking until you know you whiff an Akumatatsu over their head. Um, right. Like, but with that additional sound cue, it does became it, it does become possible if you're paying close attention to tell whether or not your opponent is currently standing. Um, incidentally, that's why I play Kage because I want to be able to do tatsus regardless of what state my opponent is in. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thing. So, I mean, like, it's really cool, too, because I know, like, Killer Instinct is really, really good for accessibility. At least that's what mm -hmm. I remember hearing about. But, yes. you know, one of the reasons for that is that Keats, you know, one of the main designers on the game, it does have the colorblind issues, right? So it's like mm -hmm. he has awareness of this, right? It's so hard for a lot of us to be aware of this kind of thing. So it's really cool that, you know, as a person with one kind of disability, it makes you think about how to account for all the other disabilities uh, as well. Because I know KI was like, it's supposedly like very stereo based and even like how loud things are based on the distance from the opponent or something like that. Yes, and it has walk sounds, which is very important. Oh. Um, in in oh, lots of wow. other games, you can't tell whether or not You're your right. opponent is moving. You're um, right. So the presence of walk sounds is uh, is huh. a big deal in KI. Uh, unfortunately, uh, its menus are are not great, if I recall correctly. Oh, okay. um, the narration isn't perfect, but once you're actually in the match. Um, the audio is phenomenal. Okay. Uh, Mortal Kombat being another example of a game that does a great job on audio. Uh, when, uh, of course, when we think of audio for Mortal Kombat, it's like, oh, everything's so visceral, right? Uh, but that additional attention to detail in those sounds also <laughs> makes every action sound very different when you're relying yeah. on it to determine what's sense, going yeah. on. That makes sense, yeah, sure. 
Yeah, definitely wow. the sound of getting your eyeball stabbed out and then also getting gutted in the stomach sound very <laughs> differently. So you'll know which move you're getting hit by. <laughs> Makes sense. But, I mean, actually, I, this is an interesting question. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's any research done into this or if there's any talk or knowledge on this topic, but does it feel like right now that maybe, for example, Japan is just not not doing enough for accessibility or America's doing more, American develop, Western developers are doing more, or does it feel like something, because, you know, we talked about Killer Instinct, Mortal Kombat, you know, and, 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 and <laughs> stuff like that, and, but, like, are Japanese games, you feel like, doing enough for this as well? So I will say that in terms of folks who are becoming vocal advocates, um, it is showing up more in the English-speaking world mm -hmm. rather than elsewhere. Um, so I actually did uh, uh, an analysis of all the tweets that went out uh, on Glo Global Accessibility Awareness Day back in May, oh, where dang. lots of folks were talking about uh, accessibility ac across digital media. Twitch, uh, again, Dale Cruz, great job getting disabled gamers um, spots on the front page all day. Uh, and when I looked at the tweets, what I found was that uh, the, the network of tweets and people who were retweeting each other and, and replying to each other uh, was present across just about all of North America and part of South America, very present in Europe, um, also present in some parts of Asia, but mostly it was like the, the Western portion of okay. uh, uh, China and Russia. And uh, hmm. it, it was sort of this insular group across a few different languages, uh, English, French, Spanish, and um, German being the, the predominant ones that were interacting. And then there was a completely separate group that were retweeting each other, all in Hindi in India. Um, <laughs> there was a little bit of activity uh, in Japan, but again, the population there just being smaller uh, may have affected how much right. I was actually picking up. But uh, a lot of what we see in terms of advocacy is absolutely happening faster in the English world than okay. in the Japanese world and has specifically been focused on fighting games with folks like hmm. uh, uh, Rattlehead huh. talking to NRS, starting that yeah. conversation, which has led to what we see now in Mortal Kombat, which, again, not perfectly narrated menus, but at the same time, in a uh, Twitter exchange I had with uh, Denis Sied, the UI uh, designer I mentioned earlier, one of the things that he said was that Whenever a game gets finished, there are always things they wanted to do in accessibility that mm, they yeah. weren't able to. Yep. And that mm -hmm. always goes on the drawing board for the next game, um, which is, uh, again, a really important concept because accessibility can be extremely difficult to add in later on. Yeah. It's usually something that has to be a part of the, yeah. the basis uh -huh. and the blueprint yes. for the game. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and so hearing that from a company that we've seen make, or, or perhaps more appropriately heard, make great strides in accessibility over its past few games, knowing that they're constantly thinking about that and, and adding that into the design for the next game is just, mm -hmm. it, it's so encouraging to hear, right? Because you know that things that couldn't be changed now are things they're looking to change down the line. Um, and uh, again, this, some of this may be the language barrier uh, where I'm not hearing as much necessarily from the Japanese community. Right. Yeah. Um, but there is definitely some learning that's going on, right? We're seeing uh, the implementation of stereo audio even uh, in the, the Guilty Gear series, which wasn't a concern before. Hmm. Um, I know that the feedback that they received on the, the, the Strive betas, yes. um, mine was almost entirely about how I wanted to play this game with Dengster. Um, and I talked about how the lobby system was not great because we had to wander oh, around and find each other. That's and if, right, that's if, right. If there's no way for him to know what lobby he's in or, or actually oh, tell me where he is. Right. That's going to be very difficult for me to do. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Uh, and, and so these are concepts that they're definitely getting some feedback on, and there may be some lag, but at the same time, the community is uh, extremely supportive of each other within accessibility. So a lot of the folks that you heard me mentioning before, uh, James Berg at EA, Cherry Thompson, at Ubisoft, um, Bryce Johnson at Microsoft. You see these folks talking with each other all the time on Twitter and celebrating <laughs> each other's accomplishments and and talking about how they're going to take what they're seeing, you know, one team do uh, yeah. and, and, and try and bring some of those concepts back home with them. And I have no doubt that the same things are happening uh, across language barriers, um, uh, across barriers that I have in language, but that other yeah. folks don't. 
It just might not be as visible to us yet. Um, but uh, again, things are, are trending up, right? Yeah. We're not seeing games get rid of accessibility features in part because it's general quality of life improvements, but also because it's what people need to play the game. Yeah. Um, and uh, there is one other thing I should mention in terms of increasing accessibility. Uh, so Skull, Skullgirls actually has uh, a menu that can be completely read by a screen reader. So not optical character recognition where uh, it's a program that's trying to guess what mm -hmm. characters are there, mm -hmm. but the normal interface that a screen reader uses to read a web page can be used to read all of the menus and all of the practice mode data in huh. that game. Oh wow! And that the Reform Studio has committed to maintaining that support um, in Skullgirls cool. and, and implementing it in future games. So that's something that's that I awesome. know lots of folks are really okay. excited about. Uh, and I've got my fingers crossed that that's going to be coming to other games so that I can drag Ding into those as well <laughs> um, so that he can kick my ass in uh, all sorts of fighting games, <laughs> not just in Street Fighter. That's awesome, uh, yeah. Um, so I, I've been trying to look at the camera a lot. Uh, folks who are in, in chat here, if you've got any other questions, by all means, bring them up. Um, yeah. Uh, and of course, the, uh, I've been droning on a lot. If, if the three of you have anything else that you'd like me to try and cover here, dude, um, you you just no, you've been great. Shit out of yourself. Yeah, we didn't have that anything. You were ready. One hundred percent. Yeah, no, you you nailed it, man. It was, it's been awesome. Uh, I'm I'm glad you folks feel like it. Uh, it's been productive. Uh, and again, uh, it's important for me to say. I'm, I'm doing my best to translate a lot of concepts that other people have taken the time and effort and emotional energy to, to either create resources that I've used or to teach me directly. Um, so the least that I can do is to turn around and do my best to portray the barriers that exist and how to tackle them um, as opportunities arise. Uh, and I do also want to mention that this is a great primer to a conversation that Emily already teased um, that we're going to be having. Uh, uh, probably in 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 two weeks, possibly in three, depending on uh, timing, on uh, uh, a few medical procedures that are going around, uh, going on. Huh. Um, but we're actually going to be sitting down with uh, Joe Monday, who uh, shout outs to RSF, the first major tournament that had uh, yes, the captions. captions available right. um, all the way back in March last year um, was when that happened. Um, so he's going to be leading. Uh, uh, a roundtable discussion about accessibility in the FGC, uh, specifically during the pandemic. So there are lots of concerns that haven't been brought up today about things like live tour tournaments and how to make sure that those are accessible um, to folks that deal with things like anxiety or um, have wheelchairs that they need to be able to get to the setup and to the bathroom and to food, um, all <laughs> you know, without running into any issues. Um, and, and so there are lots of additional barriers to be discussed, but while we're still in, in a state where we're not having locals, focusing on the digital aspect of things makes the most sense. Um, so we're going to be trying to hit that with people that actively experience these barriers themselves. Um, so it's going to be people that are, are more knowledgeable than me in general, um, but have already been consultants on, on games on the basis of, of knowing how to tackle these barriers. Um, we'll be sitting down and having this conversation so that folks can learn how to make their events, how to make their content, um, and how to build mm -hmm. their communities so that they are as inclusive, welcoming, and accessible as uh, digitally feasible at this point. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Uh, a couple of last things. I mean, you mentioned that you you do feel like fighting games are actually like making more headway in terms of accessibility than a lot of other genres in video games right now. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that they are making greater strides uh, in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. but fighters in general have always been a more accessible game, uh, especially 2D fighters, because of the constraints on where the character can move. Got right? It. If you're if you're playing a shooter, it is very easy easy if you're not using sight to get stuck in a corner or not know <laughs> mm -hmm. that you have to jump over a log. Right. right. But with fighting games, that's generally not a concern. Right. You know, if you walk forward and press punch, you will eventually hit the other guy. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, especially with the introduction of stereo audio, uh, it becomes much easier to figure out exactly what's happening on the screen right. and apply concepts that sighted players use all the time, like spacing in order to make sure that your opponent can't jump in on your fireball before your DP comes out, right. um, frame traps. All that stuff is uh, mechanically the same once you figure out the spacing. 
uh, obviously it's much harder to do something like what The Last of Us 2 did, where they had entire teams dedicated to uh, different aspects of accessibility. Um, that's much, much harder to pull off, uh, right. especially in a multiplayer environment for something that has more true 3D movement and isn't constrained in the way that fighters are. Right. Um, does that mean that we won't see that accessibility in other genres at some point in the future? Absolutely not. We've seen it's possible now, which is great, right? Mm -hmm. Now we have this new gold standard to strive for and try and push past. Um, but where fighters are concerned, because the baseline was a little bit higher because of the constraints of the system, uh, the improvements in accessibility have rapidly made the games uh, a, 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 an equal playing field, as we're seeing time and time again, uh, mm -hmm from players like Sven or Broly or Def Gamers TV. Uh, Chris is a Street Fighter player as well. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's it's inherently a more accessible genre and it's definitely moving forward, but I don't know if I can say that it's necessarily moving forward faster than anyone right. else. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, is there anything see... else that you wanna bring up? Uh, there's a question in chat about blind Tekken players, and yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know any off the top of my head. Oh. Uh, I will certainly ask for you, um, and uh, I'll let the Ultra Ten TV Twitter account know so that you can retweet it yes. back out or, or mention it on the next, uh, the next show. I see from Dangster and, and Don't Run Off, they're both saying that Tekken is mono, so it's actually yeah. not really playable for uh, blind players because you can't tell how far away or anything of where anybody is on the screen. So that's that's something that hopefully someone, I mean, maybe even like Tag Markman or something, you know, try to get some, you know, maybe have them put in something ahead of time for Tekken 8 so that they can build it in there, you know, <laughs> while they're going. Definitely hoping for it. Uh, and of course, that's something that we saw with GG Strive, right? Like this yeah. shift from mono to stereo now means that Dengster gets to kick my butt in another game. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And, you know, one last question. I mean, just for me, from me, I, I mean, in the past, I've seen uh, obviously disabilities, not just deafness, blindness, that kind of thing, but a lot of like physical limitations. And I used to see a lot of like, you know, controllers, custom controllers made by what was it, like Ben Heck, I think was his name, right? And like, do you guys have any resources for, for that? Or like, is there any progress on that, especially with all the 3D printing? Like what kind of headway is being made for that? Or is something like the Xbox, uh, you know, accessibility controller just, you know, fulfilling a lot of those needs? So whenever you're talking about accessible design, the crux of the problem usually comes down to providing as many options as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that the Xbox Adaptive Controller, the ZAC, does extremely well, okay. where you are building your own control controller inputs from uh, a center console that along the back is just a bunch of jacks for you to right. plug in switches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so like I have one and I use it because when I'm playing Planet Side, uh, it's great to have a bunch of switches I can hit with my feet and my legs or just smack with a hand so rather cool. than trying to hit an individual yeah. button. It takes a lot of the strain off of my limbs and it lets me to play for much longer. And I know some folks, uh, including uh, Grant Stoner, uh, AKA uh, SuperCrypt1994, uh, <laughs> he's actually playing Street Fighter V with it. Um, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so uh, at some point, he and I are going to have a set. Uh, the running joke is that uh, whoever loses can no longer work with Can I Play That? They're getting fired. Uh, <laughs> Dang. So, Stakes uh, are high. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, incidentally, if you ever get a chance to chat with Grant, he is a, a wonderful font of information and is very passionate about yogurt. So definitely ask him what his favorite, fl favorite flavor is. Um, that okay. will get you uh, a great starting point um, to, to be able to chat with him. Um, <laughs> so but yeah, the, the Xbox adaptive controller, it, it is something that on its own is a remarkably flexible, uh, piece of equipment just because of the customization that's available. Um, and again, shout outs to, uh, the micro, the team at Microsoft that put that together. Uh, Bryce Johnson, uh, one of the folks that was sort of the driver behind that, uh, who incidentally also builds his own fight sticks to test frequently. Um, and who I just had a really great exchange with, uh, through No Good Citizen, actually, 
um, talking about a new type of mat ball top that they had available at Focus hmm. Attack, where uh, because of the difference in surface relative to the plastic one that came with my Panthera, if I squirt it up a, a little bit, the tension between my skin and the, uh, the top of the stick meant that my very weak grip was not going to cause as many missed inputs. Oh. Um, and it's something that I've actually oh. like seen change uh, to make things a bit more consistent. And I know that Bryce has as well. So, uh, you know, when we talk about these controllers and the people that are making them, they're not people that don't know the FGC. They're people that are buying from Focus Attack <laughs> and taking a lot of the concepts yeah. that they see in sticks and in controllers um, and, and trying to bring them to a more accessible device. Um, so that is, of course, like the, the great example of a big step forward that's been made recently. Um, there's also uh, a guy, uh, I think his name is Barry Ellis. Uh, One Switch is his account, and he's over in the UK. Uh, he builds a lot of customized controllers for folks, um, again, just to fit very specific needs. Uh, Able Gamers also does a lot of work oh, yes, with that. Right. Yeah. Um, hmm. So there are, there are a lot of different folks out there that are working to fill that space. The Zap was a great step forward in allowing people to do it where a lot of the customization you can do yourself at your end rather than having someone make something special for you. Um, but yeah, both approaches are absolutely still going on. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on and talking with us about it. This has been really fascinating. And like Brock said, we didn't even need to ask you any questions. <laughs> you definitely nailed all of it. It was awesome. <laughs> Yeah. It, it is something that I talk about a lot and that I'm very passionate about. So I really appreciate oh. you taking the time to have me on the show. Uh, of course, if anyone has questions, you're more than welcome to hit me up. Uh, my Twitter is at that phage guy. Um, uh, and again, I am not an expert on all of this, so I may end up tagging in someone else to help you out. But if you want to check and see if your alt text is on right or you're having issues getting your captioner running on your stream, um, definitely hit me up. I am always happy mm -hmm. to help. Um, and you can also tag uh, Dengster, he's uh, Deng90. Uh, anytime you need to uh, get someone to complain about the sun being in their eyes, uh, <laughs> or if you have a particularly clever quip uh, on your alt text and you want to, uh, to see how someone who's using a screen reader experiences it, um, okay. Deng, don't run off, uh, Victor Andre 87, Sport and Glitched Vision, uh, blind press all folks that regularly use uh, screen readers to check what's going on in, on images and Twitter. Um, so by all means, reach out to them as fighting game players, show them a cool image, and ask them for a set. I am sure they would be happy to run it with you. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Oh, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank My you. My pleasure. Thanks, Wade. And uh, everyone, stay safe. Uh, have a wonderful Absolutely. evening. And uh, uh, yeah, keep playing. Cool, man. All right. All right. Coming on. Yeah, for sure. Well, that was super cool, man. I really enjoyed listening to him there. Uh, lots of really interesting information, only some of which I'd ever thought about before. So yeah. I'm, I was really happy to have had that experience of learning more about it. It's it's like it's a very eye opening thing. Like I said, I mean, sure. I know, you know, for years we've been doing the Tuesday show. You know, David and I, you know, accessibility. I mean, I mean, just like increasing the number of people who are able to enjoy fighting games has been something very important to us you yeah. know uh any sort of barriers and so this is one you know that i almost kind of feel like man i can't believe this hasn't been something that i've been thinking about you know but you know it's good to get educated like this and you know i've often said you know one of my favorite parts of learning any video game is finding out that you're not good at it and learning the the, the high level stuff finding out that I don't, I haven't been keeping accessibility in mind is like, you know, I don't want to see it as like, man, how could I have been so dumb? But more like, I'm glad now that I'm educated and I'm kind of eager to do better for that. Uh, exactly. So it's an opportunity area. to do better. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. So. Cool. Well, you know, this is my guest. I already knew everything he was going to say. I'm <laughs> totally an expert. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get everything uh, well, Brock, you you're, you're, you're the one who, who thought of inviting Phage on, so shout outs to you. That was right. Yeah. Doing my job, Chief. Indeed. And in, I appreciate that. All right. All right. So uh, we move on to 5-5 five, five matchup? Yep. Let's do it. Let's do okay. it. Let's do a 5-5 five, five matchup. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we wanted to make sure that we got all the things that uh, Phage wanted to get out. Uh, and so that means I guess we're probably not going to get to like 
probably tournament results. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Let's definitely do five five matchup because that's fun stuff. So let's first start out with a topic that we thought of discussing, and that is the idea of uploading matches. This is something that comes around every now and again. I see it in particular, I would say, in the NRS scene, although that is one of the scenes that I most pay attention to, so that might just be just the fact of me being in there. Uh, but I actually missed, missed this this week until uh, Brock was telling me about it. So Scar had a couple of tweets relating to the fact that he had a set with somebody, you know, he considered it a casual set, and that set was then uploaded to YouTube. And the intention in that upload was not to, like, be a jerk to Scar. It was just like, I did great, or this guy did great, and this is fun to watch, and check it out. And Scar sort of felt that that was, um, I mean, what it seemed to me in, in the way that he's mentioning it was that he felt like it was prying, maybe, that it was going beyond a sort of boundary that he felt that there should exist of, you know, him not feeling anymore like he could just play casuals, just play for fun. You know, he has to be, he has to be taking it seriously constantly because he never knows when somebody's going to upload a clip of him losing. Uh, and, and while he's okay with the idea of losing, like he doesn't need to win every match, uh, he doesn't want to feel like people are posting stuff up to like get one on over on him right. or mm -hmm. or like be like i beat scar Ooh, i'm so great you know as sort of like a clout chasing idea um so i hope that i'm encapsulating it all right but there, there were a, a little series of tweets that he mentioned about this and again this is something that we've seen in the past from other players as well uh, what do you guys think about uploading matches of other players or of sets that you had with some players without their consent Boy, oh boy, do I have some feelings about this. Feelings? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got some feelings. I feel some, some ways about this. Uh, this just to be super clear. Scar, the Mortal Kombat player, uh, who has yeah. in the past been one of the greatest NRS players for the past, you know, most of a decade. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to preface what I'm about to say. Uh, I am not... I am not a fighting game conservative. I'm not one of these people who thinks... Everything is the way it should should stay the way it was. Everything should be really hard, you know, no easy inputs. I'm not one of those guys. I'm a I'm a fighting game progressive. I want to see more accessibility. I want to see, you know, getting rid of stupid like pretzel motions and things like. Well, we don't need all that. I'm a fighting game progressive. However, in this case, the way we did shit back in the day was way better than how Scar handled this shit. Okay. Is he really? If you're one of the best players in the world, right? You're one of the best, like, no, and no doubt, Scar is one of the best players in the world. Are you really upset that somebody went on YouTube and said, "Hey, I beat this guy who's really good"? When people do that shit to me, I I take it as a compliment. Like, hey, man, yeah, good games. I might say something like, "Well, you know, I was just kind of dicking around with my eighth character or whatever," but like that's that's like the extent of mad I'm gonna get about it. Like, the, if you're out there winning tournaments and you're out there in the public eye, of course people are going to get excited, A, when they run into you online, and B, if they beat you. Now, if you really, really had that much of a problem with this person being excited about beating you, you know what we did back in my day? Throw up 100, I'll play you first to 10. And then I'm going <laughs> to upload that, and you can hold that L forever. That's what we did back in my day. I don't know. Maybe people just take to Twitter now and say, I don't like that you beat me and put it online. Like, that's so whack. That's the wackest, softest shit I've ever heard. And, like, that's not like, that's not like against Scar. This is not against Scar. This is against people who do this all the time. Like, this is not just a Scar thing. This is... No. Hell of people have done this. And, like, don't put my matches... Like, they're not your matches. They're both of your matches. The publisher of the game owns the right to the match regardless. So it won't complain to them. Like, just... Just, just I, I can't think of a better term than man up, woman up. Hold your L, and if you don't like it that much, go beat that person and be like, look, I told you I was just clowning. It's not that big of a deal. End it there. Like, I don't... You don't own the rights to those matches, man. If somebody wants to record the video game and put it on the internet, don't get mad about it when they go, woohoo, I won. Right. Well. Um, what do you think, James? <laughs> I mean, we I had one old man's perspective. What about oh, yours? Oh, dang. Hang on something. You are getting a dog nose on stream here real quick. I see that. Hang on. <laughs> That's a appropriate segue. <sighs> Sorry. It's, it's the, it's the, uh, 
<laughs> the green screen thing. I think David's nose is reflecting very much, and it's uh. Why would that have changed? I don't lab? know. It's very weird. <laughs> okay. Why do you have a dog nose because of it? Is what because he, he it's bleeding. His nose is disappearing, and it's the Dimitri poster behind him oh, that's bleeding okay. through. Okay. I was see. so confused. Like, yeah. did you put a filter on him? What are you doing? No. I'm just making it brighter on my side. No, no, just. just oh my goodness. Uh, David, you're disappearing. Let me do something. Just making it real bright for me. We're refreshing David here. Okay, there we go. We refreshed David. There you go. Well, so anyway, that's my whole rant. <laughs> Continuing on. What no, do you guys think? I mean, honestly, like, you know, one, you know, you could say I need a first of ten, but a lot of people won't, won't run that back, right? Like, I, I always joke that, you know, I beat Justin in Super Turbo at B5, and I'm never going to play Justin in a tournament ever again in Super Turbo, <laughs> you know, because that, that's just the way it works. I mean, look, the problem with it is that there's really no way to prevent this, you know, regardless of wh how you feel about this. Because if you're playing a match with somebody and it's their match, they have a right to upload it and whatever. And, you know, and if they are doing this, like, oh, my God, look, I beat Sonic Fox because, you know, he was using yeah. his he 17th character. Do. You know, you just, I mean, it's just one of those things that you just deal with. And... More importantly, if you do want to just play and mess around a little bit, just, just Smurf account it, dude. Like, there are so many players out there that have a Smurf account out there. In fact, a lot of the top players have one just so that they can play against other top players and not have people go and find their matches very easily, you know, so they can kind of practice in private and such. So, um, yeah. So if you don't, like, if that's the mode that you want to play in, play a Smurf account. That's all, so... I think that's the best way to do it. Or even still, like, let's say you want to play a Smurf account online and stream it, but don't want to take it seriously, just use a Smurf account anyway, right? I mean, then at least people know what mode your brain is in. And if everyone's like, I beat Scar, and then all these people would be like, yeah, but that's a secondary account, the one that he doesn't take us seriously, blah, 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 kind of stuff like that. So yeah. I just I just think that's the best way to deal with it. If, if you want to play cat, I mean, I have Smurf accounts that I used to use that I don't actually use at all anymore because I just don't play online enough to really warrant one, to be honest with you. Uh, but, I mean, back when Season 1 came out, I definitely had one just so I could practice online and stuff and not have to worry about people, you know, being like, oh my god, James is, James is Alex is whack, you know? And I'm like, this is the first time I mean, I've ever played Alex, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. You're not wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've never played Alex, so yeah, for sure, it's right, so... Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I've done the Smurf thing. Smurf, I mean, what? I'm not at a high level to call it. A you Smurf, really right? have the most random online names in general. Correct. Correct. It's not even. It's not even a Smurf. That's your main. You just have a stupid name. That actually is true. <laughs> at this point, I've been streaming on the stupid name account in Street Fighter Five for years, and I think people do know that's me. Yes, of uh, course. But <laughs> uh, for other stuff like Mortal Kombat, for example, when I play it on PC. Whenever you change your Steam name, your Steam profile name, it will change your in-game Mortal Kombat name. And so nobody will know that it's you if you are playing on PC. Now, not everybody has a PC, right? That's not something that's available to everybody. But if you do have a PC, that's a really easy way to make sure that nobody can recognize you like straight off the bat. Um, so I, I do that. And I saw Katana Prime put a tweet up a little while ago saying kind of like, look, I." wish that I... He gets messages a lot, as does Scar, as do many other top players, not just in MK, but in other games too. When they lose to people, they get messages from those people being like, hey, GG, you know, ha, ha, or, <laughs> or being more of a dick about it, or... Man, you can block it. messages if it's a problem, though. Dude, I can't I mean, even I tell you... Be training. I don't know, I, I mean, will, I wouldn't want to do it. I either. will tell you that when you stream fighting games online, the ratio is like eight to one in terms of people who beat you and then come into your stream and be like, hey, James, that was a good fight. You know? Like, I know that because I do that when I'm playing Street Fighter against somebody. Like the other day, I got matched up against Snake Eyes. And usually he beats me, but this time I beat him. And I, you can better believe, I went into that chat and I, and I didn't, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't anything there, but I did want to see what he said. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> You're part uh, of the problem, David. But I too do that. I didn't so, say you know. <laughs> Uh, you guys oh, are all, you guys are all terrible people, man. I didn't say anything. I just wanted to know. I do. I do it in Rocket Arena. 
guys are Me and my buddy people. Patrick will purposely watch Rocket Arena streams to see who gets mad about us. You do. Snipe people. Yeah. Oh, so, look, anyway, having having a secondary account is really useful. Or, again, just playing on a game. Uh, Rocket Arena lets you do this as well. Many Steam games let you do this. Where if, you st if you change your Steam profile account, it'll change your in-game name. And then you won't have to deal with this fact of people always recognizing you because you can change it constantly. That's really handy. But the greater question, the bigger question of, you know, could you, should you have the ability to prevent other people from showing your matches? I really, I really hope not. Um, and I, and I know that that opens people up to this annoyance, frustration, right? Especially if you're otherwise an, anx an anxious person or maybe have had depressive episodes. This kind of extra, like, having to deal with somebody bothering you after you beat them or they beat you or whatever is just an extra thing you don't need. I think that the way to deal with that, like we've been saying, is with Smurfs or, or with secondary accounts. I don't want somebody to be able to control who gets to see their matches because I really like to watch matches. And, and I, I, you know, I like the idea that, for example, in Street Fighter and in a couple of, of other games, you can search for matches that somebody's played. And, like, I follow people in Street Fighter Five on CFN. And, like, I want to know, like, what did Tonyo Yogurt do the other day, like, when he was playing Honda? Like, I'm learning from that. Um, and I'm not, I don't go into that with the expectation that, like, this player is going to win all the time. Like, I, you know, of course, he's good. He's going to win a lot of the time, but he's not going to win all the time. And that's really valuable for me. So I love watching on YouTube. I'm subscribed to a bunch of different channels on YouTube that collate Street Fighter Five matches. Same thing as just a couple of them, but there's a couple that do this with Mortal Kombat 11 as well. And that's really handy. Like, I, it just is a way to see different character matchups and different player matchups that I definitely wouldn't other see, uh, otherwise see or would see much less rarely. So there's a, there's a great value in that for learning and for having fun. Right. I mean, but see, that's the thing, right? There's a difference between uh, those channels out there that just go find matches and put them up there, like what was it, like SFV matches on YouTube yeah. or something like that, right? But, you know, you see, uh, for example, uh, Foxy Grandpa saying is, is, is he's talking about how when people are trying to do the clout chasing, when they are yeah. just trying to brag about oh, it. We were talking about earlier, right? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in, those, yeah. in those cases, I totally, I mean, I, that's why I have had a secondary account, I, right? right? I mean, I don't want to deal with that either. Uh, and... Uh, there's certainly times when I'm trying out new characters. And, like, I don't even have the expectation that somebody like Scar does of you, Scar should beat you most of the time, right? Like, nobody has that expectation about me, especially in a game like MK. Uh, so that's... I don't even have to deal with that. But I nevertheless do get messages when people... When I'm on, like, my Ultra David account <laughs> from people being like, oh, all right, GG's, you know, just being a dick. Right. Uh, yeah. And sometimes I get messages on Twitter about it. Yeah, it's frustrating. So for those situations, <laughs> I feel like it's much better to deal with that by having a secondary, and again, this is a big part of why I do play on PC, where I can change my Steam name all the time. I know right. that that's not something that's available to everybody. Not everybody has a PC that's capable of doing that. But if you do, I do think that that's a good way to handle the situation. Right. Anyway, I mean, you know, I feel I feel for the players involved who, who feel like they can't just, like, have a period of time to hang out and play without feeling like much is on the line. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just one it, of those... It does, it does seem similar-ish to me to the idea of the uh, skill-based matchmaking discussions that we were discussing recently in Shooters. Because this is maybe not quite as stark. Like, the idea that, like, Scar's not trying to, like, dunk on kids in his streams, you know? That's not right, the same yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Foxy Grandpa is, actually, but many <laughs> other people are Justin not... Justin Wong. That. <laughs> uh, so it's it's like maybe not that extreme but there's maybe some similarity of wanting to have the ability to just chill out sometimes. well so here's the I, thing I, here's the here's my final statement on this i know we have 45 seconds left on this but basically we don't have in the fgc any training for people on what it's like to become famous and that's just something that you have to handle fame is just something all this garbage comes with the territory. It's also why got some of the players are like, why can't we just talk about, you know, things like we talk about on a regular basis with our friends and stuff. Like, you know, all these other professional sports, they have classes where they teach you about these kind of things like this, you know? And if you're gonna be, if you're mad about being able to do that, that's the price that comes with being one of the best players at anything. One of the best at anything, people are going to come after you and try to do that kind of stuff to you. And uh, it just comes with the territory. There's nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. So, yeah.
Yeah, it's the it's a bummer. It's a bummer. Mm. Anyway, at least Foxy Grandpa gets good sound bites out of it. <laughs> See, because his name is a Foxy Grandpa, I just picture the, the those NBA commercials. I forgot who it was. Like you know the 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 uncle or the grandpa, you know who who like dunks. Uncle Drew, that's who it is, yeah, who, like, dunks on everybody. <laughs> All right, well, you want to move on to viewer questions here? Well, I did have the other 5-5. Five five. Maybe we can just save it for next week. Oh. But uh, basically oh. someone had mentioned to me on Twitter, you know, talking about the Strive lineup, that they really feel like every fighting game series should have a base set of characters that should show up in the game. So, like, every Street Fighter game should at least start with the original 12 characters, Kami and Akuma. And then, like, Tekken characters should have these ones. Like, the fact that Venom and Eno aren't in this Guilty Gear, you know, feels wrong and everything like that. And yeah. I don't agree yeah. with that at all. <laughs> it sounds like a 10 0 matchup. We're all in agreement. Yeah. Big. Yeah. I, I like having the variety. I like having the new characters, and, you know, he even asked me, like... What? This game should have these characters, yeah. I think. Because, like, they brought up, right. like, what would happen if Street Fighter Six didn't have Kami? I was like, Alpha 1 and Alpha 2 didn't have Kami. Yeah, Guilty Gear Sign didn't have Johnny. And, like, I, I mean, I was only sad in Sign because that made me use Potemkin, and in that game, yes, Potemkin did suck. <laughs> but outside of that, it's whatever, so... To, to be honest with you, I like I like having the variety. I agree with that. Okay. All yeah. right. Let's go to the the viewer questions right here. Right life. As they say. Whoops! Actually, as they say, you know what? I forgot to do. I forgot to type up all the 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 the, the questions to put them on screen. So you're just gonna uh, have to read the questions out loud. So that's fine. No big deal. Let me tell you what the questions are. We had eight of them this time. Question the first. Which fighting game has the best story, and has that story been implemented well into the game? Number two, is Guilty Gear Strive headed in a more Street Fighter-y direction with shorter combos and slower gameplay, and will that help broaden its player base? Can GG usurp the throne of 2D fighters if done right? Three, with the upcoming US elections, should streamers discuss politics or endorse candidates like other celebrities? Where should they draw the line? Four, should developers release an update before a tour's conclusion, like Street Fighter V's winter update this year before Capcom Cup, which was moved, of course, to 2021? Five, what is an ideal roster size for a fighting game, especially in regards to competitive balance versus casuals, launch versus DLC, etc.? Six, what's your opinion on the current state of community managers in fighting games? Wow. Huh. Seven, does NRS have to make Melina extra cool due to all the hype buildup she's gotten since MK11 launch? Okay. Extra cool. <laughs> extra cool. And eight, is there a way to campaign for facial, body, and racial diversity in female fighting game characters without coming off as propaganda or attacking the views of horny community members? Um, okay, well, there's a question. Uh, and that's the one that won. Congratulations, <laughs> everybody. The first question that we're going to answer is, is there a way to campaign for diversity in female fighting game characters without it coming off as propaganda or attacking the views of horny community members slash fans? Uh, whose views, to be clear, I am not taking into account. That's my answer. Yeah. Doesn't yeah, matter to me say. at all. I mean, to, to the extent that there has to be a... Uh, if there's a conflict between like what lots of women players or potential players are like would be comfortable with or something that would keep them out of being comfortable because like some horny dudes want to do what they do i <laughs> i'm very clearly on the former side like yeah I, I don't i don't even know why you would include the the horny twitter people like i who cares what they think be gone i, mean, I like, I feel like this may be related to the Arxis Twitter account, which has been getting a little horny on main lately. Yeah, uh, that, and then obviously yeah, all the MK11 yeah. stuff, how people are mad that Scarlet is all covered up now, you know, and, 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 and you know, being mad about that kind of thing. Like, imagine thinking that Scarlet looked better in MK9 compared to MK11. Like, I just, it's, but they exist, but I don't know what to tell you. I feel like that is one of the all-time best throw away who cares characters to here's a character with actually a personality who's super hot and very interesting and still super hot. Do you not see her? <laughs> like, look at her. She's obviously hot. 
uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, so it doesn't need to be viewed as propaganda. I just want to listen to women who say that they're uncomfortable in situations and like believe them and help not have them be uncomfortable as often anymore if we can. I mean, yeah. f for me, I just, I would just like to see a more diversity in, in, in just the women characters, because a lot of the times, you know, yeah. if you took the women characters in a lot of fighting games, and I'm, I know people are going to misinterpret this, but like, if you just presented them naked to a bunch of people like that, you would like, and cut off their heads, you wouldn't be able to tell who they are. Like, you just wouldn't, right? Like, if I gave you a naked Honda and a naked Zangief and a naked Dalsum and a naked Ryu cut off their head and say, can you, you guess which character is which? Them. Like, you know exactly which character is which, right? You don't get that in a lot of the, the, the women characters in fighting games. I would like to see a larger diversity in that department. You know, I would like to see different body sizes, different body types and stuff. And, uh, and unfortunately, you know, because of the world that we live in, we just at a point where anytime you try to promote any of that, it is propaganda. It's all that stuff like that. But again, it's their way. It's not propaganda. It's just their way of trying to keep you from making the changes that they don't like to see. Right. It's they're attacking you in a way to try to make you feel like you're in the wrong, basically. So this, this question, uh, just I should have mentioned this at the start, was sent to us by... Uh, MD Spriggs, and in that tweet was linked a video that inspired it from that blasted salami, uh, who I've you know seen before, a big yeah. YouTube content creator. Yeah. And they had a discussion about the lack of female diversity in Tekken, and mm. you know, they had a couple of folks on there from the Tekken scene, um, Fergus and uh, Cuddlecore and uh, somebody else whose name I'm sorry I don't remember offhand, but. Um, those were those they were involved and part of what they were talking about was yeah this ex exact same thing that james is mentioning if you were to, were to just look at the face of a bunch of different characters yeah, in uh, a bunch of different games you just they just are the same i yeah. mean they're very it's very difficult to tell them apart and their in-game stances are different and maybe they have different outfits on but like they don't have you don't have the the differences that you can tell that are obvious uh among most of the men in fighting games mm -hmm. so. yeah and yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, that sounds right to me. I think that's absolutely right. I 100% agree. I've believed it for a very long time, you know, for, for those kind of reasons. You, you literally do not have distinctive differences between a lot of the women characters. I mean, Chun-Li, I, I like the fact that they keep making her thighs, like, thicker and thicker all the time. But that's just because it at least creates a different look, you know, that there is a distinct, you know, physical feature of her that makes it so that... You know, Jury and Cami and Mika and I mean, it's just it's like uh, you know, uh, Mika, right? She's a freaking wrestler. Like, why isn't she super muscular? Like, she should just be like, like she should be like buff. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. And you don't get that out of Mika like and stuff like that. What's that? Is it a little bit like Ladiva? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. But you know, I just like they all have the same body essentially, and I think that's really unfortunate. I, th I would like to see a better variety and it's there is obviously such a gigantic variety as much as the men in the real world and we don't get to see that a lot in not just fighting games but in video game representation in general so yeah yeah I, mean, I don't think you guys have said anything that I wouldn't agree with yeah. so and, and this, yeah. is, this is not necessarily to say like I know some women who really like like scantily clad characters it's not this is maybe a different question yeah, yeah. I think instead, yeah, what, what we're talking about is like the idea of having characters who look really different from each other. And yeah. that could mean that you have like Ivy in a game, right? Or it could mean that you have the other characters that are in Caliber who maybe before you beat them up, they all, they do look different in right. some cases. I mean, and again, uh, this has cool. nothing to do with sexuality too, right? Yeah, because like you said, different. like you said, yeah. Scarlet is still attractive, <laughs> right? You know, you can definitely make you know, I mean, let's put it this way, right? How many people out there, like, in freaking Breath of the Wild are, like, hot for Urbosa, right? She's, like, the super beefed-out Garuda girl, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, that's the kind of thing, right? Sexy is everything. But, in, unfortunately, in fighting games, sexy is one thing. You can make sexy versions of all sorts of different... So it's not this whole, stop making girls hot or whatever, like... 
girls are hot of all types. That's just basically what it comes down to. So let's celebrate them all. So I just can't imagine anybody honestly thinking that she looked better in MK9 compared to. <laughs> <the other. laughs> You're so, so wild. Wild. <laughs> so wild. <laughs> Oh, it's a mixed all types, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I also would like to add that developers should probably start listening to women more. Yeah, sure. You yeah. know, like I, I don't feel like women are listened to, and they're, you know, saying like, "Hey, we don't like this," or "We do like this." Like, it's, right. I feel like it's a bunch of most likely male devs just being like, "Well, this is what we've always done. This is what the people want." You know? <laughs> yeah, and actually, you brought this up even before the show started, which is a really good point. We're three dudes sitting here talking about what, ah, what just happens if women? Like, obviously, the best thing to do really is to talk about women, have women design more characters, have them do a lot more stuff, uh, and 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 just go with their opinions. This is the take of three dudes talking about how women should be portrayed in video games. I've said this before and people have made fun of me, but I've said that, no, we don't have an idea. We don't have a proper perspective on it that we should ask the women because uh, they'll have a better idea of how to do, of what yeah. women want in games more than what guys, yeah. Yeah, I, the guys No can. way. Women know what women want? No way. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no way. That can't be it. <laughs> Surely it's not that simple. Dude, I said that one time on Twitter. I was like, literally, women would know better how to bring more women into the FGC than any man can. And, like, people, like, use that and fucking, like, try to, like, make fun of me for that. I mean, like, how do you even make fun of me for saying something like that? That just doesn't even make how any sense. How do you think dude. Scarlet looks better in MK? <laughs> I honestly don't get it. Uh... A different question than, like, her play style, which some people prefer in MK9. Whatever, right? That's different question right she looks so cool in 11 right all right well i'm not sure is there anything else to say about this topic no i'm i'm good all right let's get to number two number two is what is an ideal roster size for a fighting game especially in regards to competitive balance versus casuals and launch versus dlc I, I I just have to speak up that I'm tired of people yelling about games launching with 15 characters or 12 characters or 14 characters and being like, how is this a start? There's not enough characters in this game. You should have, like, dude, that's, that's a great number. <laughs> I think around 15 might be a perfect starting number. 15 or 16, I think, is probably just about where we need to go, to be honest, because that might even be a little bit much. It takes us a while to figure out these games and, you know, it's just, it's nice to have that kind of a smaller amount at first. And, uh, you know, people saying like, well, look at Marvel 2, it started with 56 characters. Yeah, that were ripped sprites from like five yeah. other games. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just think 15 and 16 is good by the end of a game. Like, honestly, 40 is like already pushing it. So like, I already feel like Street Fighter V is pushing it. Like, I, I know that they're adding five more characters, and I'm like, we really don't need this, but, you know, obviously sales and COVID probably postponed Street Fighter VI or whatever. I don't know. There's, like, all these rumors about that. But, you know, I already thought felt like Street Fighter IV with 44 characters was too many. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it depends, obviously, also if it's a team-based game, because Marvel games, you want 50-some characters or whatever, but... In a one-on-one -on -one fighter, I honestly think 40 is, like, at the end of a life cycle, 40 is good. Like, we can stop there. <laughs> That's my opinion, though. That's my opinion, so. Uh, no, I mean, I, I wish I could disagree. The only thing that I would say to add on to what you said, James, mm -hmm. is people should get used to having less than 15 or 16. Because yeah. I think, especially after the Riot fighting game launches... I think fighting games in the future are going to be free to play and launch with anywhere from four to eight characters and go from there. So I think people should just kind of put it in their head like, oh, uh, well, maybe this 16 man launch, you know, is actually pretty damn good because <laughs> I don't think it's going to remain that way forever. Hmm. Um, you think it's going to go down? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think games are they're, they're going to go to free to play. Uh, and when you're free to play, you're probably not going to launch with 16. You'll probably launch with, like I said, four or eight, yeah. and then build on from there. But I mean, it's like I, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll last forever to have a 15 man launch. Yeah, like I honestly, if if Street Fighter V came out in the state that it was in on season one and was a free to play game, I don't think people would have been as mad. 
because, because <laughs> you let people know that you're still working right. on you know, uh-huh. fixing things rather than going, this is a complete title, give us $60, thank right. you. Plus DLC, haha. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, yeah, I, I, I think games will go free to play in the future, have smaller launch rosters than they do now. But if I'm talking about right now, yeah, I think 16 is the ideal. Yeah. You can cover lots of different play styles with and those 16 characters. The last thing um, I want to add in there, though, is that, you know, yeah, 16 characters is ideal, but that doesn't mean 8 is too little. That's just a, uh, another thing I'm going to throw out there. If you start with 8, you start with 8. eight? I, I Did think the Skullgirls have 8 or 6? The launched, Skullgirls had like 6, I think, when it launched. Yeah, or something and, and it's like a that. team-based game, and that game yeah. has tons of depth and... It you know that the, the the launch roster didn't really affect that very much. Right. So, so yeah, I, 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 I don't think it's that important. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not worried about the number of characters to be honest with you. So uh, especially with the way fighting games are expand. Like if this was a day where we had no patches and no season passes, if you launched a game with six, it's stuck with six. And yeah, but then you would expect the alpha two and then the alpha three and then the alpha four, or whatever like that. So it's just it's ever expanding. And I like I said, I just I I really whatever the game comes out with, that's what they give us, and I'll play it. As it is, so. Yeah, I. It's not super important to me. I think that there's an interesting take on this question between the idea of a roster size for competitive balance or a roster size for more casuals. Casuals would prefer there to be more characters. That makes sense, right? I mean, they may not be viewing the game as something to be uh, really explored super in depth. Sure. But they may enjoy, like, a messing around with different characters or they may be looking for like one or two characters that they really enjoy as characters like their visual designs their stories stuff like that rather than the gameplay itself and so there's maybe different just different criteria that they're looking for but yeah i mean i think that i think the number that you guys are talking about of 15 ish or that thereabouts give or take five you know something like that is fine i feel like that is a fine spot to land on for launch Mm -hmm. from both sides of the situation uh, for players who really do want to dig in and learn all that they can because you don't want the number to be too high right that's that just becomes a big burden like we were talking about with 45 and street fighter 5 you don't want it to be too low because you want to have enough variety uh, to be able to pick which character archetypes you prefer and it's a si- similar kinds of questions for players who aren't going to get their super in-depth uh, of you know wanting to have more i understand probably leaning on that side rather than having less but balancing those two out i think yeah it seems to me that like it's somewhere in the teens high teens low teens it seems like a pretty reasonable number to me and as far as the idea of dlc i think i think what i would most like to know before dlc comes out is <laughs> just the characters are going to be there just like yeah yeah rather than going into it just figuring out on the fly i have to already spend whatever the amount is for for a season pass depends on the game 20 bucks or whatever it is before i do that i'd like to just know like just let let me know which characters are coming out and that would really alleviate i think a lot of the concerns about that because i don't think that the concerns are really like there's too many characters there are too few Uh, most games just haven't been that way Instead, it's just the frustration of not really knowing what's coming, and it's that it's, it's a weird it one because it's by spending money, announcing the characters one by one is good for publicity and hype. So it's like a, it's like yeah. a weird balance that they have to figure out, and it, not... it also definitely is going to boost sales. Yeah, because there's a lot of people who uh, just buy the season pass. That's what they're going to do it regardless. So they buy it, right? Then they drag in other people they get excited by the hype of the character announcements. And then maybe one of those people who weren't even going to buy the game at all gets Anji or whatever. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh my god, I have to get it. So that definitely does help, like yeah. James said, the publicity and the, the marketing of the game. Like, there's reasons why they do that. Rather than just go, here's what you're going to get and here's the dates. and Kind of like how Street Fighter did with their current um, yeah. goal. But, you know, obviously they don't have the last character. So it's the same idea. I wonder if Street Fighter has any data on the sales comparison between the season that they did announce everybody right away, you know, with Sakura and everybody, 
versus the season that you know the other seasons where they didn't do that. I wonder if it's different. But even if we know who the even if even if we know who the characters are, I feel like we still get hype for trailers anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's, it's just it's free real estate, man. It's free, yeah. it's free publicity, free hype. Why would they not take it? Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, my ideal roster size. <laughs> Under 50, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm out there watching people in Smash, and I just can't believe what they have to deal with. That sounds awful in Ultimate. There's so many characters, and some of them are copies, and I don't know why they exist. And I don't want too few, but I've played Third Strike since 1800, and there are, what, 16, 17 characters Nin- in that game? 19. 19, 19 characters, actually. Yeah. And ST has 16 Maybe a little bit more than that, considering some of the old characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've played those games forever. I mean, that's fine. Like, honestly, I'm not... As a competitive player, <laughs> that is a fine amount for me. Yeah, yeah. I think that character number, just the, the sheer size of it, is definitely a casual player thing, where... I want 100, like, Smash. I want 100 characters. <laughs> or or the characters. other the previous Dragon Ball fighting games, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> and, like, dude, I, every now and then, I watch... League of Legends, just to like see what's going on in there, and the amount of champions in that game is what is it? 150? Like it's just an absurd. It's like an unmanageable number. I can't imagine getting into it now. When I got into it way back in the day, there were already I don't know, 60, 70 characters, and I remember thinking like, this is absurd. How can I possibly learn all of these? And now it's double that. I, you know, I just oh, look, start grinding. <laughs> I'm definitely not. That's. <laughs> not the only reason I'm not playing, but it is part of the reason I'm not playing. Yeah. I just don't want to do that. Uh, so I don't want too many. It seems like that doesn't act as too big of a limiter because League of Legends is obviously still super popular, both to play and to watch, but it is part of why I'm not doing either of those things. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this is just a very subjective answer. Okay. Well, we've only got like 20 minutes left for the show, so you want to just burn through everything else that we have here? There's really not that much. Okay. Uh, in terms of fighting game news, in terms of game news, Smash, Minecraft Steve should be out at this point. That is to say, like, this point in the show. It, he wasn't out before we went live, but he's coming out tonight at some point. So that's cool. It should be by now. Uh, that's curious. That's interesting. I'm curious to see what that looks like. Uh, again, you can buy him for five ninety nine, or you can buy Fighters Pass Two for twenty nine ninety nine, which includes Min Min and Steve and four others in the future who we don't I have, know. I do Steve not. I haven't downloaded any of these characters recently. I should just to, just to mess with them, dude. I haven't messed with any of these characters. <laughs> um, I don't have a Switch, so mm, I mess up. Ah, that's fair. Switch is the yeah. I enjoy it. Uh, SF Five. There's a couple of costumes. What are out? Karen has a Hokuto uh, Fighting EX Layer crossover costume that came out today. Chujeki Ho. And I don't know anything about this character. Does she look like Karen? No. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't. (laughs) So, uh, I mean, she's basically... Her and Kairi are kind of like the mainish characters of the game. She's the one trying to find, you know, because Kairi is the one who's been brainwashed and blah, 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 blah. You and, know, I know, of course. Yeah, you know, sure, you I know all about it. Yeah, but the thing about it is I would have swore they would have made her Sakura. I, 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 I even said Sakura earlier because I could have swore that they would make Sakura this character uh, instead of Karen. I just thought that was a very odd choice. To, to, to make so because it would have been made more sense with the Sakura Ryu and the Hokuto Kairi kind of relationship you know but you know I, you, sure. yeah I know thanks you right got it. I know dude I mean it's crazy great explanation yeah that's not the only new costume coming to SF5 by the way that should be out today so enjoy everybody who's uh, interested in Hokuto from Fighting X Lair and in other costume news you can get UYU and Nasser costumes. <laughs> Those These are two of the teams that are in Street Fighter League, and they've actually put the logos and, and colors and stuff into the game on the characters that the players are using in Street Fighter League. Yeah. So, for example, the UYU one has Seth, Akuma, and Rashid, and the Nasser one has Zeku, Akuma, and Rashid. Um, I guess that's kind of a bummer that they just ended up playing two of the 
two of the three same characters there. But <laughs> they could have they could have put my girl Marine in there, and that Laura as another character rather than. But I mean, I guess it's another team. So. Well, it's also the players. Oh, that, but but it's also the players that were literally on the league. Oh yeah, yeah, That's no, the I, thing, I know. Right? I, I yeah. got why they didn't. Yeah, do that. yeah, yeah. I'm just saying uh, if they want to have a different didn't... character. I hope they do do that. But I think that this is just a really Dude. cool idea. Like it's. Yeah. It is a nice thing that has existed in other games for quite some time for players and teams to have their mark in the game itself. And I think it's great to have it in fighting games too. I would certainly love to see it more. It feels like it's like, why didn't this happen a long time ago? I Just probably because there wasn't really any well established teams like this. But, you know, I think it's a Echo great idea. I've been around for like two and a half years. <laughs> Which, in the grand scheme of things, really doesn't count for much. But you know, <laughs> I mean, in the world of esports, that's a lifetime. Dude. It's true. I guess well, it's yeah. true. Yeah. But I mean, I, I just feel like this is yeah something that they should have done a long time ago. And I feel like what's cool about this is then you can support your favorite team, right? If you're a big Big Bird, Angry Bird fan, then you'll grab the NASA costumes. I think that's really kind of neat. You know, I think yeah, it's they a cool idea. For Red Bull as well, and. Another nice thing about this is that buying these costumes does support the Street Fighter League. Oh, okay. And okay. I don't know the exact mechanism of the way that this is being supported, like how, like exactly how does your money immediately translate to like prize money or whatever? Right. That doesn't seem like it's immediately obvious, hmm. but they did say in a tweet, "Support SFL by sporting the colors of two of our favorite teams." So hmm. okay. there you go. Okay, sure. It's four bucks per character pack. So if you want to get the three UIU ones, that's four bucks. The three Nasser ones are three bucks as well. Cool. All right. I like cool. it. I like that. It's a good idea. I'd love to see more of it. Okay. That's all I got for game news. And then in tournament results, actually, a bunch of stuff happened, but um, we're not going to spend too much time on it. I really liked the first Street Fighter League Pro US. I had a lot of fun watching it. Yeah. I was happy to see that the commentary team was back of. Steve and Vicious. They with, were a divider, well. with a divider. <laughs> with a divider. That's mm -hmm. true. Uh, I, I was also happy to see that Rob TV was doing interviews. Yeah. I mean, good for Rob really TV. Really good with these interviews. I was really happy about I mean, Rob. I'm happy for Rob. To, for to sure. be fair, to be fair, I am a little sad because I felt like Rip did an amazing job in the previous seasons. And, That's you true. know, I, I, I would have liked to have seen Rip there. But having an opportunity for Rob TV, also super cool, because Rob TV is a really, really fun guy. So he's a, he's a really yeah, cool guy. Yeah, he really handled it well in yeah, the first group. Yeah, so yeah. That, that was great. And then just, like, seeing competition offline <laughs> uh, was... It, <sighs> you don't get to, really. So the, the only time that we've been able to do for Street Fighter is in Street Fighter League Japan and Street yeah. Fighter League US. And uh, for whatever reason, which completely eludes me, they haven't talked about how they definitely made sure that this was safe to do. Why would they just haven't come out there and been like, yeah, we tested everybody twice. I right, know. yeah. Breaking news from me. I wish that they had said that, but they did. And they, um, I, and that, that, as a result, like makes me really happy about how it, it went. Yeah, uh, Vicious yeah. says that they, they were literally tested every day. Like, they had, like, temperature tests, everything, every day yeah. that they're taking super precautions. And, in fact, some of the original teams that were announced aren't or what they were because some of the countries just couldn't even make it out here anymore. And so we had some new players like SKZ show up in, uh, on the Team All In, for example. And shout outs to SKZ, by the way, starting off his SF League career by beating Punk in Street Fighter League. I know, League, that was so dude. Sick. <laughs> that was pretty so sick. Bad. Oh, no, hey, hey, don't upload that video, okay? Don't upload <laughs> okay, that video right, making nice. Punk look bad. Come on. Nice, nice. He was, he was playing his eighth character. Nice. Oh, no, I'm freaking out again. Yeah, yeah I, no, I just, I'm trying to fix that. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. The Japan one still continues to be fun as well. It's such a different style. Like, the street <laughs> the one is very... I mean, it's a it's a definite like U.S. FGC production. Like it's a it's an esportsier take on that slightly. Like it is a little bit swankier in some ways, but it's definitely like the U.S. FGC put it together. Like you could definitely yeah. tell. And then in Japan, it's definitely like some 
Japanese TV show company put story. <laughs> that's actually what it was. Japanese TV show company. That's that's literally yeah. Cool. That's the LLC that's name. The brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I think I think it's a lot of fun to watch the two. They're just so different. Uh, CPT Online Europe West happened, and that was won by Infectious. He was ridiculous. He only lost one game in the top eight. He basically blew everybody up. Good work. Uh, did either of you watch Arc Revo Japan or Arc Revo America Midwest? No, I did not have a chance oh, to. Sure so. Bummer. Yeah. BBCF was won by Fuku Bang, Undernight by Kyo Gordo in Japan, and in US, the winner of Grand Blue was Tibola with Beelzebub and Luane, and DB Tag was won by NCG Marvin Pie with Nine Marvin and Pie. Marvin, Marvin Pie. Pie. Okay, okay. Correct. Marvin did any of you watch the Tekken Online Challenge you're up north? No, I did not. I, I haven't had a chance to watch a lot of things recently, so I just I, I just don't have that time, unfortunately. Tekken 7, well, this is obviously Tekken 7, was won by Y with Akuma. And there you go. Okay. Uh, we had another show you can scrimmage. It was won by Snazzy Baby 16, who is way better than the <laughs> like, mid summer uh, as her thing yeah. would suggest i mean she's not like spoofing anybody but she's definitely really good yeah she and, i mean uh, she even mentioned that she plays uh like lobbies with top players a lot so yeah yeah, yeah. uh that was fun that was fun we'll do that each weekend that we're both around we for try. it yeah uh yesterday i did another soul cal distancing uh that one was won by Nowo. And uh, I'm going to probably try to do that every other weekend. But again, shout outs to all the people who donated for the match, Reno. I was able to do some cool stuff yesterday with this new computer. So I was really happy about that. So I was actually able to run four parsecs at the same time, <laughs> connecting to four different machines. <laughs> and the wow. computer, it was purring at 20%. <laughs> <laughs> Processing power it was great. It's wonderful. All right, let's move on to upcoming stuff. Again, there's not a ton to talk about here, but I wanted to highlight a few things. This Friday, Low Kick Esports is putting on Matcharino Cup, which will be Super Turbo on Fight Cade 2, and the top four players in the bracket will advance to the finals on October 30th to compete for $1,000 plus. Yeah. So they are doing it big for the Super Turbo community. Well, and if you there's a... That, through check it out so that match arena league just to clarify is a bunch of different people are doing this so uh arturo's i think gonna have one event as well that gets some of the winners and okay. and everything and there's also another twitch channel called the chenzor dynasty which is part of this as well i okay. have to plan my date and then i will also run a qualifier for the uh, match arena cup for super turbo so i'm excited okay. about that i just haven't picked a date yet so as soon as i get that i'll probably set that up on fight Kate as well so all right there go. there's also a set of exhibitions being put on by on for ect east coast throwdown uh, of course can't happen as you all know but they are putting on some stuff this coming weekend they're doing Tekken and DBFZ and Street Fighter V. And in DBFZ, they're having four of NYC's best. Uh, those will be uh, Coach Steve Nitro and Amini Assassin versus Alucard. Street Fighter V, they're going to have players including uh, Tanachi, Marvisto, Brian F., Shine, Idom, Zaffarino, Hoji, and nice. Burkish. <laughs> It's a great lineup for SF5. And then in Tekken, they're having uh, Sodom versus Dotoring, John Ding versus JDCR, and CBM, Cherry Berry Mango versus Mulgold. So what, that's what, a big lineup as well. What that's event is this? With Core A Gaming. Oh, okay, this is, nice. This is for ECT. That's who's uh, sort of putting it all together. But the Tekken one is in cooperation with Core A Gaming right, as well. Okay, okay, nice, nice. Uh, direct from Korea. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Check that stuff out. Uh, that will be on, uh, looks like twitch.tv slash Roadrunner Records. Ah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense, yeah. Super cool, actually. Wow, that they got that. That's amazing. Cool partnership there. And then lastly, stuff that's coming up this weekend is Capcom Pro Tour Online Central America number two. Okay. There you go. That's what I got. That's it for news. Cool. I have nothing. James is typing. 
Yeah, sorry. No, someone is talking about Fight K2 and saying, uh, you know, saying that they're not sure where to get the ROMs for it and stuff like that. There's actually, uh, I forgot what his name is, who created it. He sent it to me. You just get a bunch of JSON files, you dump it in the directory, and it'll just get them all for you, basically. And uh, it's very, very simple to do. If you talk to the Fight K2 community, they'll all point you to it because I think everybody's using it. Very, very simple to get the to get the games for it. So It is simple. Yeah, the question... From Grinning Oni, is Fight Cade 2 legal? <laughs> emulators are typically cool, especially emulators for older stuff before they were Fight Cade is like. legal. But uh, <laughs> some of those ROMs are maybe not so. not so much. Listen, if you just own the original arcade board, then you're good to go. Yeah. Oh, that's what I've heard. Is that right? Yeah. Is that true. right, lawyer? Tubaware? Yeah, that's the truth. You're welcome. Now you know something about law. I anal. After all I, this time. I anal, but I do think that they're legal. Is that right? I have no idea what you even just said to me. I'm confused. You guys, oh, well, maybe you just don't have no maybe you more ensconced in lawyer humor. Um, <laughs> I am not a lawyer. It's something people often say on the internet, and uh -huh. the abbreviation comes out to a very unfortunate. Oh, words. okay. I am not a lawyer. Got it. I got it. Got it. Yep. Nope. Okay. I have not heard that. That is not lawyer humor that I am aware of, so. Only lawyer humor it's I have. not legal advice. You have to put $1 or $5 in my pocket first before I can give you legal advice. Yeah. That's the law. My only, my only legal humor is just yelling at not lawyers, at you can't handle the truth, you know, and stuff like that. Did so. you say $1 or $5? Yeah. So if I put $3 in your pocket, it's not counted as legal advice. No, I'll take $3. Oh, okay. Well, you said one or five. You're very specific. So I'm like, no, no, won't cut it. Sorry, everybody. No, no hundreds accepted here. One dollar. Yeah, no, there's no, there's yeah. no rule for that, obviously. Well, you're like a vending machine. All right. Anything, Just about. Anything else you guys want to talk about here? Any, any extra stuff? I have our miscellaneous section entitled "Final Round Fight" and "Rambling yeah, First Blood Part 2. What do you want to do? I want to fight. Why am I not in the starting video yet? This is bullshit. It's good we ran the starting video. There's no tub aware. I've been part of this show for like a month now, okay? You haven't... I am, yeah. I am irreplaceable, and I demand to be part of the opening intro. You're still you're still in the testing phase. I'm sorry. In the, in the secret channel that you're not a part of that me and David are in uh, on the Ultra Chen Discord, we keep talking about this, and we're like... Should we kick them off yet? And we're still trying to decide it right now. So once we make the decision, then we'll... If we'll, you guys kick me off, I'm taking all your secrets and I'm putting them on the internet, okay? Go ahead, The dude. internet. <laughs> the whole internet is going to know. That's I hate it, but that doesn't sound like a great idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'll, I'll watch me. Actually, that's a great idea to mix Deuce. I'm, I'm just going to put Steve and Steve into the intro and, you know. That's Bro, I, I would I would honestly <laughs> get up and walk away. Uh, just <laughs> like, oh, that would be it. Someone's not joining us tonight. I would be so <laughs> mad. I would, be, I would actually be heated. Uh, oh, man. That's funny. I'm definitely doing that now, just like the Molina thing. So, you know, that's definitely happening. Just have a, yeah, me yeah. getting shot by Robocop. Yeah. But, I got Buck Baraka on the Combat League. He's pretty cool. He looks like a bug. He's basically Bug Baraka. Bug Bug Raka. Bug Raka. I actually had a I thought about doing that, but I just don't like how it sounds in my mouth. Okay. Bug Raka. Yeah, there's something something uncomfortable. I don't like it. It's not my favorite kind of pun. I thought about it though. I thought about it. I didn't uh, stick with it. I hope everybody out there has uh been enjoying the 1080p stream here and uh no audio desyncs no i mean hopefully no problems with the recording and all that stuff like that again shout out to everybody who donated and helped to get this new computer uh it was actually <laughs> more than the donation goal i set up for but that's cool it's future investment and like i said streaming at 1080p uh running four parsecs or streaming at 1080p and uh Capt window capturing a Street Fighter V that was running at the highest settings. My computer has not jumped over 20% processing power, 
whereas just streaming this would take my last computer to 99%. So it's just so weird. I don't un like it doesn't make any sense to me because like computer hardware like it's it's digital like so it's weird that it degrades over time. <laughs> <laughs> it degrades as other things become more demanding. Yeah, it's it's so weird because like what I, I, when I first when we first started streaming, it wasn't maxing out like that. I don't feel like I changed it that much, but you know, it's like weird, but it's it's really nice. So yeah, it's a cool computer, and I'm green with jealousy about it. Was that a joke or a pun or something like that? The way that he said it definitely made it sound like there was more to it than what he actually said. Well, I'm currently green, so maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at my, my, my I'm, color, I'm the color green. Yeah, I'm you're kind of. Green. I don't see. Anyway. Really? Yeah, really. I look green to me. All right, I'm glad it doesn't count. Dude, I'm like stuck in outer wilds. I'm actually stuck. So. <laughs> you are stuck. Yeah. I'm actually legit stuck and not sure what to do in that game at you this got, point. So. To be fair, you got stuck your last stream. You've been stuck for two streams you just didn't like you like haven't made any real discoveries or progress yeah i mean I, I mean i finished i like cleared out a bunch of like there's more to explore here kind of stuff like that so yeah. i got a lot of yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah. and take yeah. taken care of and things real like revelations that. recently so. yeah unfortunately Good luck, man so. i mean i told you i can give you hints when you want them but i mean the only, i don't want like direct hints just more like is it something that it's super obvious that i'm overlooking or you know or is it like at this point there would be nothing that i can say to you uh -huh. It wouldn't be a direct hit. Okay, hit. gotcha. Like, I couldn't be like, I would have to pretty much tell you what you're missing. Okay. Like, where okay. To, at least where to go. Gotcha, and gotcha. that's probably too big for you. So. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, I guess that's it then. You know, I could probably, oh, dang. Now that I realized it, don't they have that crazy thing now that I can run on my computer that kills all the back noise? So that way I can leave my air conditioner on. They won't hear the humming anymore. The NVIDIA cards, like, had oh, that. Oh, yeah, you could do the NVIDIA thing. Yeah, you sure. probably can. You have the tech to do that. I oh, think. dang. Yeah. What's Your it called? video card is ready to go. RTX yeah. Voice is what it's. Uh, VTN Wesley said it's called RTX Voice. I am, I am definitely doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and they also have wild ass no green screen software too. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. Incredible yeah, 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 yeah. Really incredible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah Machinex yeah. Soul. This is the new PC. If you actually look at your settings right now, this is at 1080p, which is higher than I've ever streamed at. It's always been 720p because I've never been able to get anything higher than that. But finally, uh, yeah, no, you don't understand. Like I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the power that i have right now i haven't edited anything yet but i'll be doing so right now so we'll find out how that goes as well well james not having to reline up that uh, audio hopefully hopefully dude oh dude, yeah. if if there's audio desync something went wrong on your head <laughs> yeah. nobody's mentioned it in the chat today so there's no way at least the twitch vod would have audio DC. well i mean it, it might it, it would only be right the twitch vod won't won't have it i'm just wondering about my local recording and if my it's local really recording cool. is messed up i still have to fix that and the twitch vod takes as long to download that's not speeding up based off of my computer so let's just put it that way that doesn't that doesn't increase in speed oh dang Huh. Got real excited about something. I think my... Well, I don't know if this is too TMI again, but I think my cat scab fell off, so... Oh! Oh, don't right. show my cat. You're about to pick up a scab? Oh, yeah. I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to find it. I don't know where it is, dude. <laughs> you probably ate it, man. Let it go. Ooh. Yeah, that's, you probably did. Uh, what, what, so, so what? Wait, let me... I can read the specs. Some people want to know the specs on the computer here. Uh, so let me get you guys this. Cats do some wild stuff. My cats regularly eat each other's barf and their own barf. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that just seems like standard cat behavior, so we don't stop them from doing it. <laughs> have you asked your doctor? <laughs> yeah, we have actually asked if it's normal, and yeah, they just... They eat too quickly sometimes, and they their little tummies can't handle it, and they barf. Then they and then they go it. over to it, and they eat it, or... The other one goes over to it and eats it, and <laughs> it seems completely normal. So I have I have an AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT 3.8 gigahertz 
4.7 gigahertz turbo with a uh, where's the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super 8 GB GDDR6 with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So there you go. Well, that's a fantastic joke, Dr. Diggler, PhD. I love it, and I kind of can't believe that I haven't thought about it beforehand, but you have nailed it. How did I waste that many eggs on my shirt and not get yoked? That's the end of the stream, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Time I think to burn that's, them. that's the peak. That's the beak, you said? that Because we had a bird, people? Nailed it. Got him. Okay, all right, all right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, where Can you is bird him? Bird him already. Okay. It's a little quiet for people, but there you go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Give him the bird. See you next time. Peace out. Look, I'm working on it, all right? I've been lifting weights. I've been chewing the exercise times. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know how hungry I am? <laughs>